Hey everybody, Nevin again. Uh, got an exciting one for you today. So this is a Warriors and Lords game against Rompsteel. So about regarding Warriors with me, I've been playing this game probably a little over two years and just never wanted to try it. So if you're somebody who isn't interested, believe me, I understand. <laughs> the game's complicated enough. But if you were just kind of wanting to see how it played a little, or even if you don't know how it plays at all, you know, I'd say give it a watch. You might see uh, something that might kind of catch your interest because I think uh, in this game in particular, <laughs> this expansion was used pretty much to its fullest. So, funny enough, this is actually my very first Warriors game. And I kind of vowed I would never play it on the Discord because I want to kind of save that as an in-person thing. But it just so happened I was practicing it so I could play it in person and Romsteel was searching for a game and you know uh, Romsteel big member of the community he's heading out soon so I figured hey why not I can get one last uh, game with him and hopefully it'll be an epic one so I figured why not make it my first Warriors game so this is a very long game uh, all factions get used I don't know if that's a normal thing in Warriors but I don't I wouldn't assume so but yeah, every single one gets used, so it's a pretty epic one. This game was like four hours long. I'm going to try to be quick because I don't want to be here all day. But let's go ahead and jump right on into it. All right, so I'm free people. I decided to be free people. I think, at least at the time, I thought their factions were a bit more straightforward. Uh, I start with Spirit of Mordor and the Western Way. So this is that card that lets you travel by sea. Uh, being my very first Warriors game, not sure how excited I was to play this. I was like, uh... Maybe this will be a daring defiance. I don't know how comfortable I am. And then for my faction card, I got the one that lets me draw three cards and then I can keep one and then put the other two on the bottom or top of my deck. I'm probably not gonna go super in detail of all the cards we draw, or for at the very least, ROM steel, because again, this is a very long game and yeah. Uh, Monsters Roused and Captain of Despair. Captain of Despair is very strong turn one, but of course that depends on if the Fellowship decides to come out of hiding. And he gets evil things, so he got a spider card, so he probably wants to bring them spiders in. Okay. Allocates. Whoops. I mean, oh, I almost, uh, almost didn't mute it. Those dice were going to come knocking. All right. Allocates one eye, rolls pretty much the perfect turn one roll. And one more eye, and then Gandalf rolls an eye. As he does. So they move Isengard to war. I move the Fellowship. Safe. They bring in the Balrog instantly. Yeah, when you roll that many musters, why not? And then I muster the elves down one step. They draw shadows moving. Yeah, the uh, none of the cards were playable. I mean, Monsters Rouse was, but it, does that really count? <laughs> and I do the standard moves. He brings in Sauron. I muster the elves all the way to war because. So yeah, I saved that will last in case he mustered Sauron to war, turn one, and then I didn't want to give him just the Black Captain by mustering the elves all the way to war. In Lords, mustering the elves to war as soon as possible is usually advantageous to you. Sauron's only one muster away, elves are, you know, three, so it's nice to be able to react to him when uh, the opponent decides Sauron's getting into the action. And then right away, uh, Rom still brings in the Dunlandings, which makes sense, get that die. I get Elven Cloaks and the Red Arrow, but really good draws, unfortunately I already moved Edoras, but what can you do? Still take the muster, but again, so these are expansions, so these are both the expansions, so the odds of Rohan being activated are very, very, very low, so Red Arrow is actually not a great card. So they draw Dreadful Spells, Denethors, not happy to see Denethors, especially because Baradora hasn't even moved yet. And then uh, for there, they got a Corsair's card. And then I got Paths of the Dead. So, again, my very first faction card wasn't for a specific one. It was just, you know, figure out one, I guess. <laughs> Have three cards, pick one. But I just drew Paths of the Dead. So, right away, I'm looking at the Dead Men of Dunharrow, which I would just need to get Aragorn to Gondor or Rohan. It's a lot more flexible in Warriors. But I say Frodo good, allocates one eye, rolls one more, and Gandalf rolls another eye. <laughs> and I rolled no movement. So, yeah. So this game, 
again, when a game's four hours long, usually some stupid stuff happens. This game is very one-sided in its luck in one aspect, and then the one-sided in the other aspect. So we'll see what I mean there. Basically, I'm going to get screwed in one sense, but then I'm going to kick ass in the other sense. So it makes for a really exciting game to watch. All right, so I bring in Gladriel immediately. I mean, you roll four musters. Elves are at war. I might as well uh, make use of it. But yeah, this is a terrible roll for free people. <clears throat> they draw another card with the Balrog uh, die. I mean, nothing else you can really do with it, so you might as well do it. No, there's still none of those cards are playable really. Horde from the East isn't even playable. I pass. He draws another faction card, another Corsair's card. So definitely, probably the most awkward one to be drawing. Turn one, turn two. But again, I'm not an expert. But Southrons and Easterlings are not at war. So the yeah, he plays Monsters Rouse. Makes sense because that's the only card that's playable. And he had a Palantir. He could maybe wait for me to use a ring to move. But in Lords, you don't always know if free people's going to do that against three eyes, because is it worth giving them the chief? I don't know. So yeah, plays Monsters Routes, and then he starts mustering in North Dunland. So yeah, I throw an Elite into Rivendell now. Uh, it's pretty obvious he's going to go for Rivendell. And even if this is a bait to go for Lorien, I have Gladriel, so I can literally wait until Gladriel's uh, just getting her door kicked down before I start mustering in there. So I'm pretty flexible right now. But yeah, moves the Moria army out. I muster Gondor to war, because I'm definitely not getting five elites in Rivendell. He moves the Troll Shawls, starts getting Barador ready, and then yeah, I put a fourth elite into Rivendell. So this is really smart by them, because I only have one movement. I didn't roll any this turn, so getting Rivendell under siege early is really good. Uh, you get rerolls on the Fellowship. You turn on some cards. Um, the Nazgul. Yeah, the Nazgul ones. Uh, but even if you conquer it, you still can't play tile draws, but still, you get some cards and don't get others. So they attack me, I go under siege. Uh, notably, they do have Denlandings, so that's that's pretty cool. The Denlandings are seeing action right away. I draw Vile Gladriel and Thrandal's Archers. So I have two blue tiles, keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, Thrandal's is usually a good draw, it's not super relevant right now, but I mean, I'll take a free card draw, why not? And then I get the Ents Awaken. Yeah, so this is the one that lets you kind of bring a tree into your, either your starting setup or Fangorn, and then you get to play another card, which is really nice. So if I can set up Aragorn, I can both put a Ent into my kind of Ent pool, I guess, where it'll get mustered if I ever bring them into play, and play Pats of the Dead. So I can kind of two birds, one stone it. I like these cards. And then, funny enough, uh, Romsteel Draw is armed by Sauron, so pretty good timing. Uh, I don't remember what this one does. Yeah, it makes him help on the hunt, and it adds combat strength, which actually is pretty relevant because he only has six units in Rivendell. So having those two Dunlundings he has actually add to his combat strength, it could help. Pretty good draw. And Lilith's Eye, which is not a good draw. And Madness and Horror, which is not a good draw. <laughs> Can't complain about a Swarm of Bats, but... Uh, so the best thing about me getting Galadriel like I did is because I knew I wasn't going to move. Uh, I lose Gandalf's die for the turn because uh, you have to move the Fellowship to get Keeper Gandalf's die. Allocates one eye, rolls two more, and I get a much better roll. Uh, yeah, I can't complain about this roll. I got one muster in case I need it. You know, at the very least, even though my roll was bad last turn, I can't really... I w yeah, one movement would have been perfect. Like that Gondor muster I could have lived without. But... Yeah, being able to take advantage of me putting the Elves to War turn one was nice. There's nothing worse than putting the Elves to War and then you roll four characters the next turn. I'll take what I rolled over that, for sure. And honestly, getting Gondor down one step isn't bad, because remember, this is Warrior, so if he wants to ride his little boats, he can't teleport. He has to actually ride the damn boats. So Gondor being kind of closer to war, being able to defend themselves, is much better in Warriors. Yeah, the, the cheating card is gone. Thank God. I do not like Corsairs. So I move right away. Uh, yep, get, uh, I get missed, which, you know, it's four dice on sixes. It's not insane I get missed. 
He flips the Balrog. I pass. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that... Uh, let's see, what were his cards? Dreadful Spells, Captain of Despair. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised he went so hard on Rivendell. Considering I just had a million musters. Like, yeah, you you attacked it. You got rerolls on me, but... I had the roll to punish you for that. But, again, these are the elves. So, getting free people to burn two elven elites turn two was pretty good. Because now Lorien, Woodland Realm, they're more sitting ducks. I didn't separate Gimli or anything. Get the dwarves involved. I had no separation. So, yeah. The northeast in particular is looking way weaker now. Uh, Kyrdan Ships is weaker. But Kyrdan Ships is not nearly as essential because of warriors. Again, uh, the boats need to actually be boats. I move again. So that's risky. What could I have done differently? I mean, I could have just played a blue. But I figured because I didn't move last turn, I need to get I need to get going. And I, I draw three, which is great. So Gandalf bites it, and Strider becomes the good. A little unfortunate because my next move will kind of... Yeah, will bring me past the Balrog if I go through the standard Moria route. You don't want to do that with Strider because they have the chance to kill each other in Mortal Kombat, but I have Gladril who can burn an eye. It's only eyes that do that, so I'm kind of set up for it. And I bring Gandalf in because uh, they get Southrons and Easterlings to war. Alright, they use the Recruit die to bring in the Corsairs, which is perfect for them because, again, they have uh, so many Corsairs cards. And then I draw a faction card, and I get a freaking Eagles card. So you kind of see where this is going. I have three cards, and they're all different factions. All my three different factions. So it's a little awkward. I mean, again, this is my first Warriors game, but presumably I would much prefer to just get all of the same faction. But one thing to keep in mind, now that Gandalf the White is in play, I just turned on both Ents and Eagles. So I'm probably going to get one of those this turn. And the Eagle card I drew was... All right, this is the one, this is like, uh, the eagles are coming, but way better and cooler. Is where I move all my eagles, and then if an eagle, if eagles are in the region with Nazgul, I roll a die for every eagle, up to five, and then I get hits on coin flips, four ups. And if I kill a Nazgul, well, yeah, if I get those hits, I'll kill the Nazgul. And if I kill at least one, they all have to retreat, including the Witch King. Way better. And you get to actually see the eagles attack the Nazgul, so that's always, that always helps. I think a big uh, appeal of Warriors is just the miniatures, so that was kind of one of the reasons I was like not too excited to play it on Java, and despite how epic this game was, it still was four hours long, so I'm not excited to play it in the future either, I think I'm just going to kind of stick to what I usually do, but it was, a again, it was kind of a send-off for him, and I wanted to at least give it a shot, I was like, I can't pass on this opportunity to get a Warriors game in, just to see uh, how it plays, and it could be good content. So, he says he's thinking, so yeah, uh, with Warriors, there's a lot, we kind of talked about it a little bit, there's a lot less autopilot uh, analysis paralysis in a way, there's just so much you can do now. One of the best things about War of the Ring, and it's one of its flaws too, is when you roll a die, that's what you do. And for a newer player, that's heaven, because it's, it's not some, it's a giant board, but your headspace is smaller because it's like, okay, this die can only do really one or two things. Warriors is not like that. You have all these different cards, faction cards, you have uh, multiple nations you can, or factions you can muster in. Yep. You can even do deck manipulation with Palantirs and stuff, so... You have a lot of stuff to work with, all while still dealing with your original six-hand cards that you're usually using and all that. So yeah, it gets a great use of the Shadows moving, gets Southrons and the Easterlings moving, gets... Barador moving, and what was that last one? Or Nern to Gorgoroth. I mean, maybe you could move South Dunland to Orthang just to get those Dunlandings there, but it's not a big deal. Yep, and then they place Horde from the East. So, great play because now he's at four cards, so he doesn't have to discard anything. Alright, and then I bring in the Eagles. So they go up to Eagles Eerie. Whoa, okay. I remember that happened, I got scared. I was like, what I miss? <laughs> so yeah, he starts moving to the do line, which is smart because that is my weakness. As I said, I don't have, I only have uh, two elves left. Nort's all the way up top, 
dwarves are only one step down. Yeah, this is the downside of not separating Gimli. Okay, so I draw three rings for the Elven Kings and King Brandsman. Perfect timing. Good top deck. Lucky there. He draws another Corsair's card. Orc Patrol and Orcs Multiplying. Lots of Orcs. Orcs Multiplying. Hasn't moved Dolgador out. Yeah. That's a really... So oh, King Brandsman is really good, but Orcs Multiplying again is also extremely good. So we both got pretty lucky on our strategy deck draw. And my... Faction card was March of the Ents. So this is the one that actually lets the Ents do something. Like go for the attack. But this is like a very much later in the game card. It's a little awkward to have now because you want to build up the Ents first because you have to kind of make a chain of them. They have to actually march. <laughs> so I kill it. Uh, they kill Arm by Saruman. Yeah, it's not the strongest effect. I get why. I mean, it could help in Rivendell, but probably you want to play their Call to Battle cards for combat effects instead. And both of the, uh, the Dunlendings called a battles involved murdering them, so makes sense why you'd kill it. Rohan's not looking uh, super appealing right now. Right, and then I get rid of the Western Way, and I get rid of Elven Cloaks here, so yeah, look at my cards. King Brands, I need it. Three Rings, it's ridiculously strong. Thrandals, I need it. Vile, straight, really good card. Red Arrow, debatably could get rid of, but Scouts is great, especially with this Dwarf up here still standing there. I'm going to play King Brand, so these three guys will be standing here. So having two Scouts, the odds of my opponents suspecting that are almost zero. So it makes sense why I got rid of the Blue Tile. I don't normally do that. Uh, I did recently did a card ranking, and I ranked the Blue Tiles in the F tier, with the exception of Vile. Um, I mean, that's mostly because their combats and stuff suck, but I also, you know, gave their effect score, I think, two or three, because they're usually a trap. Under very certain circumstances, are the blue tiles worth playing? Because you just don't have as much dice as free people to play them. Uh, yeah, but those, those circumstances are when the hunt pool is gone, so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Allocates one eye, rolls just one on the faction die, and then I roll the move roll. So if there was ever a time to roll the move roll, it'd probably be now. Um, annoyingly, when because I wanted to get dead men involved at some point, him getting all nations to war sucks because usually with dead men you want to get Aragorn. So you have a six die while he's building the army instead of just, you know, it's just a net loss if you just have Strider doing it. So I'm kind of less, it's less appealing to get Aragorn when all nations are at war. All right. And also considering my role, considering he's knocking on the dew line, uh, I kind of need musters right now or palantirs. So I, I burn the will. I play King Brandsman immediately. I agree with that. And I get Path of the Woeses, worst card in the deck. It happens. All right, so he moves Nazgul. I think mostly just to get an extra reroll in the Fellowship and to get that Easterling army hurting a little more. I would say, hmm, the value of the Nazgul reroll isn't at its peak on this initial move. So maybe me personally, I would have just mustered two more. That way, I would have a full five. In uh, uh yeah. Veil the Karn, but that's me. Yeah, this is when I say it's it's quite fun not to be on autopilot. So yeah, like, especially with the faction die now, where I can either play a card or draw a card, now the, all these cards I have, I'm kind of looking at, like, I was thinking, like, do I make the Eagles attack these Nazgul here and make them run away? You know, it's... when you, He only has four Nazgul, but he has two musters showing. I was probably thinking it's probably not worth it. You know, I could play the one that lets me draw three cards and pick one. Or actually, better yet, I can play Ents Awake to get that Ent into my kind of uh, starting setup pool and then play that card to see if I can fish more either Eagles. Because Eagles are in play. I'd rather have more Eagle cards at the moment. But for now, I just move. He does get a hit, so the Nazgul didn't help, but the, the Orcs got me. 
And I get a one reveal, so... Yep, I go through Moria. Balrog draws a two reveal, so I just eat it as corruption. I eat both of those as corruption, and then Moria gets an eye, so... Yeah, the perfect... That, that couldn't have gone better for me, honestly. Um, Moria is always scarier in Lords, but that went pretty well. Yeah, getting an eye for the Moria title definitely helps. Unfortunately, the Balrog's active, so... Yeah, it's a... Uh, you can kind of follow me if he wants. Alright, so he gets the Chief. I hide with the, the card draw because I am... My hand is still full. I'm kind of just waiting for him to attack me so I can play some of these cards. That could be seen as a valid tactic from Shadow. Is just if you see free people have six cards, don't attack. But I don't know. You have no idea how bad their cards are. All right, so he plays Captain of Despair, one of the best cards in the game for Shadow, and then gets Black Captain Commands, which is a bit more awkward when you have the Chief out because it's not really accomplishing much. You still get the card draw technically, even if the Wish King runs off. So I move again, so my idea here is I'd like to get in the Lorien. But I get hit again, and it's a zero reveal. So, well, the guy's getting revealed again. It was, what, seven? It was 14 tiles. Uh, six? Yeah, six out of 14 to get revealed again. Pretty unlucky, because I actually really would have loved to get in the Lorien this turn because of Captain of Despair and my Corruption... Again, in expansions, you can you can be a little slower, and yeah, I don't like the stronghold system in this game. I don't like how if you just get unlucky with reveals, you just can't visit Gladrill. It's really kind of annoying. Um, it, if it was just bad luck, it wouldn't be as annoying, but considering there's tile draw cards and Nazgul Search, Nazgul Strike, uh, where they can just 100% reveal you, it makes getting into strongholds, which already sucks because you're giving up movement to do it, like, there's so many downsides. Free People just has so many downsides in this game, and we're going to get into that later, because some of them don't make sense. Alright, so he brings the spiders into play, it makes sense, because he sh he has that one spider card that lets you draw a hunt tile if you play it, so the strongest one. Unfortunate for me, again, being in Lorien wouldn't be a threat. Uh, draws another faction card, probably hunting for more spiders. Uh, gets a death to the Forgoil, which... Forgoil... Which does not help, because it's just attack an army with Gondor or Rohan units with the Dunlindings, which he's not doing. So there it goes. Right, so here I play the Ents Awake. So I get one Ent for my starting pool, and then I get to draw three cards out of my faction deck. So I draw, we need only Wings, which lets, it's basically Gwahir the Windlord uh, after killing an Eagle, Father of Trees. Which lets me just recruit an Ent and then bring all my Ents back to the Entwood, which is irrelevant right now. And then I get the same card, <laughs> the draw three card one. So definitely take the we need only wings one. And then those other two go to the bottom of my deck. Yep. Because again, the Ent one, that Ent card is made for when you've already attacked with the Ent. So that's even more later in the game than the March. Okay, so he plays Dreadful Spells, probably... Oh, it's Iron Hills. He does get a hit, so slightly lucky there. Yeah, I say rip. <laughs> I say fuck that dwarf in particular, because, yeah, burning Dreadful Spells on one guy. Which, it was it was a cool play, because now he can walk in the Iron Hills and I won't go to war. Okay, I hide the Fellowship of the Character. Yep, he takes Iron Hills and gets into Umbar. And he got a card draw out of that, too, because the Witch King's on me. And I think he drew Orc Patrol? Oh, no, I missed it. All right, so with the with the will... Yeah, because I have six cards, I say, why not? I'll just play Thrandals. Yeah, you know, granted, I'm drawing a new one, but hopefully I don't draw a really, really good one. Because I, I already know I want to get rid of Path of the Willses, so that's not a hard decision. And I draw Dane. Right. Duh. That actually was intentional, too. So, <laughs> extremely lucky. Extremely lucky by myself. That was a 1 in 21 chance. Yeah, I was going through that because I figured they might not attack the dwarves right away. Maybe Rivendell's more tantalizing. I don't know. I mean, that looks like a hard siege to break through, but they probably want to try to take it before Elrond shows up. 
So I thought, okay, well, start going through my strategy deck. Uh, I'll play through Andals, get a new card. Maybe eventually I'll get Dane, and I just happen to get Dane immediately. So that's pretty lucky. Uh, yep, puts Erebor under siege now. So doors are at war, but Iron Hills was taken. Okay, I get the Stone of Eric, which is... Yeah, that's for the dead men. That's basically where I put it on the table, put three en or not ends, three uh, ghosties on it, and then every time I muster a nation politically, I get a ghostie into the army of the dead. Or the starting setup. I think they go to the starting setup. Yeah. Or they go to the starting setup if they're not in play yet. Makes sense. So I didn't actually value this card very highly because I didn't. I played wrong. I don't. I haven't done it yet. I think I do it once, and then I get corrected later. So we'll see that when it happens. Uh, let me make sure I'm recording. That'd be awkward. Okay. So I drew Wisdom of Elrond, Great Great Company. Great Company is exactly what I was talking about. Get rid of it. Don't need it. And then they draw the ring is mine. And a Lokai. Lokai is nice because he's one unit short in Erebor. So you couldn't ask for better luck there. Yep. Path of the yeah, I get rid of Path of Woes is great company. Easy peasy. Gets rid of De uh, Denethor's. Probably Madness and Horror. Oh no, he had six cards. He got rid of a faction card. Yeah, he got rid of the one that lets you draw cards. Uh, similar to what I did too. Yep, so I, I have two Eagle cards and two Dead Men cards. So pretty consistent at the moment. Alright, allocates one eye rolls. Three more, so rolling a lot of eyes right now. And I rolled three characters, so uh, yeah, it, it's it's not my play style to run, and I certainly will not because I hate doing it. So the game's trying to get me to, but yeah, he's rolling the eyes when it matters. He has so many dice that rolling three eyes is actually really good for him. It slows me down, and he got plenty of attacks to kind of work his military slowly, and yeah, it works out pretty well for him. And the Balrog die has not failed him yet. But Galadriel hasn't failed me either. Gal Gandalf did actually nothing. Which, yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. So we'll, we'll get into it more as the game goes on. But I feel like they just... The free people player has so many just dumb things <laughs> that just don't... They're like rulings and just restrictions that are just needless and make the game unintuitive sometimes. Um, yeah, I mean, what... It's just one of those things that when I play in person, I play this game differently. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is an online community. We play it correctly. That is the way to play it. But for example, in person, if Gandalf rolls an eye turn one, I just let the person re-roll the die because that's bullshit. I don't know. The downside shouldn't happen to you immediately. Yeah, but any other eye that gets rolled is free real estate. Yeah, you're getting the you're getting the downside to it. But that's just me. All right, so I move. He does miss, so... In this instance, the eyes suck. Plays Orc Patrol, does not draw an eye. What were the odds of an eye? Not great. Yeah, I'm just, uh, 14, 13, 3 out of 13. Yeah, made sense to play Orc Patrol there. Because he gets, he doesn't get a card draw, though. Gets a 3, so at least it's not a reveal. Uh, I take a random, and I get Pippin, so best value for the 3. First, I was going to put him in Lorien, but then I put him in Fangorn. Because, I don't know, I probably should have put him in Lorien, honestly. Yeah, that probably would have been better. Yeah, because if I get another elite in there, which is very likely, I'll have four four leadership with four combat. Yeah, because Treebeard is so much better in Warriors, and I think I don't think you need to move a Hobbit to Fangorn, but at least Gandalf and uh, Pippin are the same movement because of Shadow Facts, so. Right, so here I take the risk. It's too many eyes. He just played Captain of Despair to put another eye in. So right now there's five eyes in the pool. So I said, all right, listen. He's got a day without dawn. So be it. I throw Strider into Minas Tirith. And then Legolas becomes the guide. Plays Orcs Multiplying again. This is really upsetting to me. <laughs> uh, he upsets me, so I upset him in return. And I play Dane Ironfoot. Yeah, nothing else I could really do with that muster. I mean... He has three attacks, but no character in that 
Dolgador army. But I only have one Elven Elite left, so I'm honestly just thinking, like, Woodland Realm's probably not getting it. I probably need it for Lorien. So I'm kind of okay if he goes for Woodland Realm with the current army. Yeah, that's why Orcs Multiplying hurts so much, is that Dolgador army can very easily take Woodland Realm. Because I really don't want to put my last Elven Elite in there. But uh, he goes for Lorien with Dolgador and moves the Black Gate up to the Long March of Dew, which is surprised me. I guess it's not a big rush. Yeah, it's not like any of those nations are active anyway. Alright, so I play Vile now with a character. He moves on the Fellowship. Which looks a little goofy at first because I, I'm, I moved one step so I can just reveal. I crown Aragorn. So it does activate Gondor, which is nice. And then he throws the Balrog on me. <laughs> yeah, and then I here I play the Paths of the Dead. So I crowned Aragorn, and then he uh, forms the Army of the Dead in Eric. So he gets an extra one because I played Paths of the Dead. I love that you can play Paths of the Dead from Gondor. That's just so better. You can crown him and then do the Dead Men. <laughs> Beautiful. Alright, so here he plays evil things, the one with the, sp the spiders get the move, and then if a spider's on me, he can draw a tile, and then he gets Smeagol, so that's nice for me. And they're like tile draw cards too, where if you uh, if you get an eye, it doesn't do anything. But... Alright, I draw a faction card, and then I get the eagle one where you can actually move the fellowship, and the die doesn't go to the hunt pool, which is pretty cool. All you gotta do is kill an eagle, and you get to move all eagles too. So if you don't know, the eagles, they have a... Like, they're called a battle cards, which are all the faction's combat effects if they're with an army or near. Most of them need to be with the army or adjacent to the army they're fighting with. The eagles have a four-region kind of... I was going to say wingspan, because I am a comedian. Uh, yeah, four-region range. So they're very versatile in that regard. So right now, that those two eagles up in Eagles Eyrie are protecting Erebor and Rivendell, because they ignore mountains, just like Nazgul. And Lorien. Pretty cool. Funny enough, my opponent, Rompsteel, uh, if you were interested in getting into Warriors, he did a, do a series where he teaches every faction. They're like quick eight-minute videos. Uh, goes over every call to battle card and all that. So I, that's actually how I learned how to play. So big thanks to Romp for making that. Um, yeah, watching people play it like with the actual board, you know, it's nice, but we play Java enough. You know, I've been playing it for a couple years. It's nice to be able to see it in here, and then it, for some reason to me, it clicks better. I guess because the information is just so simplistic. It's just like, here's a number, and that's what the, that's how many guys are in that region. Instead of just a shit ton of models or miniatures everywhere. It's a little harder to follow. Alright, so he draws another Shadow Faction card, and he gets another Spider one. So this is the one that just does hunt damage. He moves all spiders, and then he can kill a spider to do hunt damage to me, if he's in the same region. So... Yeah, getting the right ones. I mean, he got some he got some real uh, poopy ones with the Dunlendings. They Those were not helpful, but... Then he draws Servants of Sauron, so that's the draw three cards one. And then he gets not on anybody's side. Which, it might have value. It prevents the Eagles from doing anything. Oh, uh, but you can... Yeah, you can discard it if um, Gandalf the White's in play, then you use any die. So probably not going to play it. Alright, he gets Day Without Dawn now, so one turn too late, thankful for that. And I get In Long Swift Lines, so yeah, this is a fantastic card. I, I'm really happy I drew this right now. So these are one of the cool cards that I like, make me like this uh, expansion so much. Basically, I play In Long Swift Lines, I play it on the table, I put three uh, eagles on it. Every time I play another faction card, doesn't matter, could be dead men, eagles, ents, doesn't matter, could even be the one where I draw three cards, uh, I get to put one of these eagles in eagles eerie, or I get to move all eagles, but, you know, probably gonna just recruit one of the three that are on the card, and I draw I Will Go Alone and Riders of Rohan, happy to have a daylight, alright, I get rid of the Stone of Eric, the one where I could recruit three ghosts, 
yeah, if I understood the, the rule mistake I'm going to make here soon, I wouldn't have gotten rid of that because, yeah, that would have been very helpful. Yep, so allocates one eye rolls, one more, and then I roll, pretty good roll. Gladriel is gone, but she didn't roll an eye, so I'm I'm happy with that. You, When you play Lords, just the mindset you should have, I mean, you should overall just have a more positive mindset. I would recommend it, <laughs> but uh, again, it does feel bad if you bring a Keeper in and they roll an eye immediately. I understand that's upsetting, especially like with his Balrog, which just will not roll a freaking star. He's had it since turn one, but usually you bring in the keepers to get their ring effect and their mustering effect. Oh, well, Gladriel's Elrond's effect is kind of irrelevant. Usually he gets some scary sudden strikes. That's about it. But, uh, yeah. So I, I'm not upset to lose Gladriel's die, but thankful she didn't roll an eye. Interesting. So yeah, I burned the will to muster in Woodland Realm. So I changed my mind. That's kind of surprising considering... Right, so I remember this. So I drew I Will Go Alone. So the plan was... Yeah, the plan was separate somebody into Lorien. And then I was just going to do that manually. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I was going to do that manually. And then I was going to play I Will Go Alone to get somebody in the Woodland Realm. So I'm getting rid of a lot of corruption doing this. But military wise, Woodland Realm's going to be seven health. It's going to have a companion in it. Erebor's not looking very takeable either. Rivendell looks buff. All the targets he's attacking are all strong. And I have eagles that are there that can cancel Nazgul leadership at least twice. So I'm looking in good shape up in the north. Like the north is set up. I have the right faction in play. So yeah, I think it's okay to throw companions out there to make it even better. And then I can just sit in a stronghold because Minas Tirith doesn't look like it's under threat at the moment. Now, this army that's right under Lorien, yeah, it's closer to Minas Tirith than it looks. So. Maybe this was a poor line of thinking by myself. But no no matter what, under any no circumstance am I not going to Minas Tirith. I'm too high on corruption. I have to go. Again, I wanted to go to Lorien, but the game didn't want me to. So he moves Nazgul, which also puts another um, die into the hunt pool. So I move now. Funny enough, that extra die got the hit. So that's pretty good. Extra reroll. Uh... Yeah, I get a two, so I kill Smeagol. So at least they didn't get revealed, that's something. Plays the ring as mine, draws Nazgul Search, there's the card I'm talking about. It always seems to come up when you're trying to get in a stronghold, frustratingly. Completely out of your control is free people. What can you do? Right, so I play I play that one card I was talking about in Long Swift Lines. Uh, he musters more spiders, so because he, he does have that one that just does hunt damage. Yep, and he still has two boat cards. So the boats are not... The thing with the boats is you kind of have to bring more in before they're useful. Like, he can only transport half that army right now, or a little over half. It's only six units. So he needs to get five boats before he can transport all ten. It's a little awkward, but once those boats are in combat, you feel it. Alright, so I move again. Alright, the reason I moved again is because I want to get in the Minas Tirith. Hits me, it's a one. So I pick a random here. It's probably dumb. It's a one and four to get a. Yeah, it's a one and four to get a hobbit. So I probably should have just eaten it. I just didn't want to go up to freaking six corruption because every corruption that I eat on Frodo is another turn I have to spend him in his tier. That was the kind of mindset I had behind it. So I'm like, do I want to? This is a whole other turn I got to spend in there, or do I just take a companion? So Legolas bites it. Alright, he moves gun to bed towards the northeast and moves that Black Gate army north. So, even though he did draw Nazgul Search at the perfect time, annoyingly, he did burn all of his die that he could use it for. 
so I did notice this. Uh, I noticed he had no characters, no palantirs, so I, I told myself mentally, do not use a ring. Whatever the hell you do, don't use a ring right now. So that whole plan of separating somebody to Lorien is not happening, because I had to... I had to move enough to get in the Minas Tirith. I want to do that as early as possible. So he attacks Old Forest Road, plays uh, Swarm of Bats against Scouts, so likely both of us had those cards. The the rivalry, oldest time of these two cards. You know, we're both six cards into our decks, maybe more because of Lords. I, I think they added two, so we're actually eight cards in. Yep, so I'm probably going to get decimated. I do. He gets a hit back, though. That's actually pretty helpful. Right, so I still have those two regulars in the pool. Um, I know that I'm going to... I'm still going... Right, this is risky. Because what I'd like to do right now is... Yeah, maybe I didn't need a move when I did. I think that's a mistake by myself. When I move, because again, he had no die that could have punished me if I didn't. There's nothing he could do. So it would have been better if I played I Will Go Alone before he attacked Old Forest Road and then did this muster. So I muster a regular Woodland Realm, muster a regular Lorien. Combat strength's good. He puts Woodland Realm under siege annoyingly. So this is a. Uh, there was no rush for him to do that. So I was kind of annoyed at the time. I'm like, man. But, you know, it was my own misplay. But he really, he read my mind there. And we're going to talk about that later. About mind reading. So instead of being able to play I Will Go Alone with the Palantir. So right, here's something where I make a mistake. I use a muster die to bring in an eagle. I'm pretty sure this is the only time I do this. Uh, and he just didn't catch it. So this is just me not doing the expansion correctly. You cannot do that. You can only use the faction die to do that. I think it's a little limiting, it's a little unintuitive, but what can you do? It, ironically, this is just the saddest thing. Earlier that day, I was talking to my girlfriend as I because I was practicing the expansion. I was like, what I love about it is all those muster die <laughs> that you roll as free people are no longer worthless. I can finally do something with these stupid muster dice. And then just imagine the pit in my stomach when Romp's like, later on, he's just like, you can't do that. I'm like, why? <laughs> I'm like, why can't I, though? I guess kings of Middle-earth will let you do more with musters, but even then, not always. But So earlier when I was talking about the Stone of Eric, where when you do a political action to muster in a dead man, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Had I known I can't just muster them in with a muster die, I probably would have kept that and played it. So annoyingly, because he put Woodland Realm under siege at the correct time, I couldn't play I Will Go Alone, so instead I play the... We need we only need wings card, which basically a uh, eagle carries Boromir up to Woodland Realm. So now that is a ten versus eight army with Boromir in there. So it's looking uh, not looking great. And uh, so yeah, I kill an eagle to do that, and then I recruit one because I played a faction card because of a uh, long swift lines. So yeah, right now technically I have one extra eagle than I should. I don't really think that's going to make a huge difference in this game, but yeah. I can't really blame myself for uh, getting some rules wrong. This expansion's very fiddly. So he puts Lorien under. He uses the Balrog die to do it, and then doesn't put the Balrog in. So yeah, that is a rule with attacking. You don't actually need to bring the character into the attack. With movement, you have to bring the character that's performing the move with the like the character die or Balrog die. Balrog die is basically a character for him specifically. So I think later on I asked because I knew that was a rule. I didn't know if that was a rule with like besieging a stronghold, but yeah, same thing. Makes sense. So he attacks Dale from Woodland Realm. And then uh, I play Confusion. So he rolls two ones and then rolls no hits. So it begins. <laughs> I roll zero hits, so, I mean, that's not unexpected. He presses, and, yeah, the North are at war now. So, he puts a whole army in Dale. So, yeah, he basically said, all right, screw Woodland Realm after uh, Boromir made an appearance. He's not having it. But, yeah, now I have these three regulars with an, uh, a leader just kind of sitting in the Vale Karnan. Definitely going to be annoying. 
<laughs> I told him. I told him. He's on the board. He got a city finally. Turn seven, he got his first point. But that's usually how these go. All right, so he gets another spider card and then another red tile. And then gets a new powers rising, which is great. Figure we need all out war, I guess. Like, look at the north right now. <laughs> that's a lot of numbers up there. Yeah, people are fighting. All right, so I get the union of all of our strengths. So this is a, I discard a faction card and then I get to draw a different faction card from my discard pile. So if I, I could discard an eagle and then draw like a ghost from my discard pile, which is pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, right now I have two eagle cards and I want those. So it's not super useful at the moment. And then I draw Mithril Coat and Sting, which is great. And then I get Grimbjorn, which is a little late, but I now have, I, yeah, I now have uh, two scouts. Played one scouts in Old Forest Road, but now I have uh, I officially have all the scouts. Yeah, this is why I asked him about the Bower Oak attacking Lorian. Yeah. So yep, I declare in the Minas Tirith. I heal one, and then the Bower Oak draws a tile. So I wouldn't have actually minded an eye here, to be honest. But he only gets a one. Again, same concept. Uh, if I just eat that one on Frodo, that is a whole other turn I have to spend here in Minas Tirith. Don't want to. So, I already took the 25% chance to get a Hobbit. Now I'm going to take the 50% and I fail again. So, <laughs> it's a little unfortunate for me. Uh, in regular real life, those odds were not high. But in Java life, where 2% two, two are commonplace, uh, I think the 50% was a worthwhile risk to take. Did not pay off though. And uh, bye bye, Captain of Despair at least, because I'm in a stronghold. Allocates one eye, rolls one more, which is what you want when I'm in a stronghold. And I roll a uh, mediocre roll because I'm in a stronghold. I do not want character die right now. What could have been worse, I guess. All right, so I use the Will of the West as a hybrid. I take back Iron Hills. And then I put a Gondor regular from Osgiliath into West Rondor. So this is a big benefit of warriors where when they want to use the boats, they have to actually use the boats in, <laughs> in a straight line. They can't just teleport. So if they wanted to use the boats to go to Pilargir, Osgiliath, they have to actually like fight what's in their way. They can't just sail past me. Which, you know, it actually makes sense if they could do that thematically, but have fun balancing that in the board game so this is actually really annoying for him now at the same time he only has three boats so it's not likely he's going to get involved but then again he has the recruit symbol on his faction die so he could recruit one boat and then play the card that lets him recruit another and then it, like do something like attack so technically he could have five boats so i already had a movement what else am i going to move it made sense i have another hybrid anyway so yeah, he ditches Lorien. So this is the downside of... He didn't actually roll that many attacks. He only rolled three attacks, so it's not like he rolled crazy. But the Balrog die, again. Sixth turn in a row. No star. So that's actually going to be really relevant here. Uh, I could have used the will to kill it. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have killed the Balrog here. It would have made that die a dead die. Yeah, and then he would have only had three moves. I guess I just... I, those guys in the north, those three regulars, I just saw the potential for them to be really annoying. And if I can prevent just him getting a single one of the five points in due, I feel like that was superior to killing the Balrog. Alright, so now I play I Will Go Alone because I have these character die and I have nothing I want to do with them. So I actually separate Mary into Minas Tirith. And heal one corruption so it didn't actually like accomplish anything because if i were to move and get hit he'd separate but at the very least if i were to run into a zero reveal which there is one left i won't get revealed all right so you can see what's happening here he's moving south so he's coming towards uh gondor so i do the only thing i can do which is muster them to close the war and then i put an elite into Minas Tirith. And then he besieges me. Right. So, <laughs> this is actually pretty cool. So, I noticed that he had three Palantirs, 
and he had three character cards. So, and the chief of the ring race is now on the fellowship, so now he can just start cycling character cards. I said no bueno to this. So I, I played upon the Nazgul they bore. So this is uh, move all eagles, and then all the eagles that are in the same region as Nazgul uh, roll. That's the one I said about earlier, where you roll coin flips for each eagle you bring there, and then if you get one hit, all Nazgul have to retreat, including the Witch King. So I bring all three eagles there, and I do get one hit, and it is on the third eagle. So actually, yeah, that one eagle I shouldn't have ended up <laughs> actually being a big difference because I just failed two coin flips. So, whoopsie, but, oh well, we're all human. Uh, there's a reason a lot of people don't play Warriors. There's a lot of weird rules like this that make it really uh, difficult to get into. But I do end up killing one Nazgul with my fake eagle, and then, yep, they all retreat, and the Witch King has to retreat. So now all those Palantirs he has, he can't use because he has no character die to move his Nazgul. Now you might notice he has the Black Captain commands, but... I can't account for everything, uh, at least uh, it the move made sense, and at least it's one less Palantir he gets to cycle with. Right, and predictably, yep, he does bring in a boat. I pass, plays a Loghai into Minas Tirith, because yeah, it's not the biggest army. I pass, now he plays Black Captain, and attacks Minas Tirith. So yeah, so he went from three potential card cycles to now he's only going to get one. Because Black Captain, he wasn't in my region when he played it. So yeah, I think the Eagle thing was a good play. Alright, so he plays no card in Minas Tirith. I think he's only attacking it because he kind of has to. But he does have those nine orcs in North Athelion he wants to get in. So I play Daylight because my hand was at five cards. Gets no hits. Uh, I get four. <laughs> yeah. So, zero hits, and then taking four, not good for the Witch King. Alright, so I do a sortie with this character die in Woodland Realm, because that army's humongous, it has Boromir, I wanted it to do something. Almost completely whiff, but Boromir does get the kill. It is actually him that does it. And he doesn't get a hit back. So, yeah. Military is not looking very appealing foreshadow right now. It's looking complicated in every way. <laughs> Which is, from what I understand, more standard in Warriors. Granted, my Warriors factions haven't really made it that way. It's just kind of more so I got the Elves to War turn one, and then I put Companions up there, and then King Brandsman. Yeah, that uh, top deck of King Brandsman really helped me out. Right, and then I recruit a Dead Men into the Army of the Dead. because. So here's the thing. Here's the great battle of our time right now, is I need Minas Tirith to hold. So everything's defended except for Minas Tirith. I mean, it has people in it, but it's not like a mega stronghold. And thankfully the Southrons are being kind of held against their will right now from West Rondor. It's making things a little awkward for them. But unlike the down, the upside of having to muster all those boats is you can just walk with the boats. So he could technically kill that guy and then use the boats after. He, he It's not only Umbar where the boats can be used. So... He has some uh, he has some flexibility in that regard. Yeah, and then he plays New Powers Rising. Sure, you probably want to play at some point. Those five of Rukai are useful; can help reinforce Rivendell with a cheeky Shadows Gather. I don't know if Rivendell is even a target you want to take, but you've already invested so many units up there. You probably try. You can take four health strongholds more often than you think. It is just awkward to reinforce. So annoyingly, I get the stupid draw three card <laughs> card again for my faction. So now that I know you can't muster factions with a regular muster, I now realize that the cards are basically everything to the factions, which is a little annoying. I don't like having to rely on a deck to be able to do things, but is what it is. At least it'll make every game different. But nothing like building up a five or six dead men of Dunhera army, but all of your wraiths of fear are all at the bottom of the deck, which is something I already knew going into it, but now realizing that getting units in that army are really restrictive, yeah, makes things a little 
a little more complicated than maybe they needed to be, but that's my opinion. So I draw Long Battle, Fear Fire Foes. So Long Battle is one of the uh, Warriors cards where I can just get rid of all faction figures in a region that I'm currently yeah, fighting in. Yeah, so it says choose a region with a free people's army with leadership. All shadow faction figures in that region are eliminated. So technically, faction figures don't get eliminated if an army's on them. Uh, let, I think spiders and Dunlendings do. Or sorry, no, they get killed if they're with an army, a shadow army. So the I think the best use case of this is being in a besieged stronghold because we're technically in the same region. So yeah, I think this is like the long battle is the anti corsairs so that really screws the boats. Yep, and he gets the good card. He gets to just take a card from his discard pile and get it back uh, for his factions. And he gets Warm with Sauron Toil and Shadow of Dolgador, so at least Warm with Sauron Toil is not doing anything. I heal one more Corruption. He does allocate an eye. Rolls no more, so again, yeah, th this is going to be a theme. <laughs> Getting the perfect rolls for the situation, uh, my opponent here. So yeah, I'm in a stronghold. I don't want to move on how many dice is this three six seven eight nine ten ten dice rolled zero eyes yeah unfortunate for me and balrog is still giving him results i was getting a little triggered at this <laughs> that's just the nature of keep of uh lords sometimes and then i rolled this so this is really bad uh i can't think of a worse roll to get in this situation yeah Maybe you just, maybe you start moving. I don't know. Uh, he did only roll one eye. Maybe you just read the writing on the wall and just say, all right, well, I'm not staying here this turn. That's probably what I should have done. But look, he's at one point. I'm at two corruption on Gollum. Like, obviously, one of those win conditions, one of his win conditions is way superior to the other. And in order to make the superior win condition decrease for him, I have to stay in this damn stronghold. So... This is the worst roll I could have gotten. I would have loved to start like mustering in um <clears throat> excuse me, mustering in Iron Hills. That was that is what I wanted. So yeah, pretty poor luck for myself. So I got the worst roll possible. He got pretty much the best roll possible. Uh, the musters are a little awkward, but the palantirs you're happy with. You rolled uh, one, two, three, four attacks. Two Palantirs where he'll be able to cycle cards, and then the three Musters, again, are awkward. Um, I was going to say bring in Gothmog, but why do that? The Balrog is doing his job. I did kill one Nazgul, so you can bring in some Nazgul. And, you know, Musters with Shadow are never bad. I, that's, uh, that's the difference between Shadow and Free People. You have infinite units, so in base game they're bad because you're always racing and it's boring, but in an actual game where people are using the mechanics getting three extra uh you know muma kill in north rune is not gonna be a bad thing for you nope or he could just hard muster or think right now and just gun it for helms deep i don't have ents in play and with this crappy roll they're not gonna be in play so yeah it's a, there, like there are no Ent cards. Uh, Ents are somebody, people that actually need to be mustered in and built. So technically, I could bring them in with this muster. All right, so I start playing by playing that card that uh, lets me draw three faction cards. I get Saruman as a neighbor, which is not a good card. I get a, I get an Ent every time he uses the voice of Saruman ability. Which, honestly, the voice of Saruman ability is not the most beneficial thing. I like doing it once to get the extra Isengard regulars in the Dunlin regions, but after that, I usually just muster elites. Just manually. You get more units that way. And uh, I get Wraiths of Fear, which is the, the Dead Men's, like, actually do something card. And then I get another March of the Ants. So this is actually pretty good for me. So I take Wraiths of Fear, because Minas Tirith's looking uh, like a snack right now out of the shadow. And then, right, I put the other two cards on the top of my deck. 
I wasn't sure how to make it so I draw one before the other. It's kind of an awkward thing with Java. Preferably, I would have liked to get the March of the Ents one next turn, but... Yep, he attacks Osgiliath. He wants reinforcements. I play Scouts to Pilar Gear. Right, so this is when I try to put a dead man into Eric, and then... Uh... Yeah, he corrects me there. Right, so... Uh... Yeah, I wanted to get another dead man, and then I wanted to play uh, Wraiths of Fear with five ghosts to go slam into Minas Tirith, get Aragorn into Minas Tirith, and suddenly have four leadership in that stronghold. Unfortunately, well, we'll see. So I play Wraiths of Fear. I move, kill one, move, kill one, move, kill one. I'm in Losternock. I have one ghost left. So... I use the ghost to attack Minas Tirith. I get two hits, which is pretty lucky, and then I retreat, or they retreat. Right, so I think all logic, intuition would imply that Aragorn could actually go into Minas Tirith after doing this. Because the rules are, you, if you attack an army with a dead men, either whenever you cease the attack or you run out of dead men, the, that army has to retreat. And then the ruling states, you may then move Aragorn and the Army of the Dead into the region. Technically, I don't have an Army of the Dead. They're dead. They're dead dead now. Uh, so Aragorn can't go in that region. This makes no sense. <laughs> this makes no thematic sense whatsoever. Yeah, and Romsteel is correct. Like, I'm not saying he did anything wrong. He's telling me the rules. This is an actual ruling. Uh, in the Almanac. It's very bizarre. It's just one of those things that's like... Why, though? Like, what is the downside of letting that happen? Is Aragorn too overpowered in War of the Ring? I don't think he is. So why is he not allowed to do this? I don't know. It's really stupid. Don't like that kind of stuff. But that's the way they decided to make the ruling. It's just, it's just fucking... It's so weird to me thinking about Aragorn attacking Minas Tirith with the Army of the Dead, like the scene in the movie... And then because, like, all the Army of the Dead made the Shadow Army run away, he watched it happen. He's like, huh. And then just sat down. <laughs> he sat down in the fields. All the people in Minas Tirith, they're dying. Uh, there's another Shadow Army coming for reinforcements. Aircorn's like, huh. I made him run. Got him. And then just kind of, like, takes a smoke break. It's like, yeah, very, uh, very thematic. And yeah, Romsteel actually agrees with me here. Yeah, he's, he's saying that's his least favorite part of Warriors. It's just a lot of weird, dumb, unintuitive rules. So we're basically saying the exact same thing. So yeah, this is one of those things in, in person. If I'm playing in person, Aragorn's moving into Minas Tirith. I don't care who's playing free people, me or my opponent. He's getting in there. It makes no sense. So smartly, he attacks. So I cannot now, I cannot put Aragorn in Minas Tirith, which is frustrating. So it's not looking uh, likely that it'll survive. I play long battle here because I have all these character die with nothing to do. <laughs> I would have loved to save this for Corsairs when they eventually get involved. He's probably like super relieved to see that card going. I think that card's kind of overpowered, honestly. I mean, this is my first game, but like just imagining building up all these boats and then attacking and then they're just dead. That sucks. So I kill one spider with this. Not the greatest value. And then uh at least I get to draw another card. Uh, I get Majesty and Glory. It's not really useful. It lets you uh, make them not use a... Unable to use combat cards for that combat, but... They just uh, end the attack and attack again, so <laughs> it's not great. Needs a companion, too. One of those bizarre restrictions, as usual, for free people. Really weird card. Brings Gothmog again. Right, brings another spider in. <laughs> I say as a joke, I hope he's got his red tile combats ready, which you would never play that, but I, I, I like to be funny. Musters an elite in Minas Morgul. Plays the one that lets him uh, take something from his discard to his hand. And he decided to take evil things. Which is the one that lets you draw a tile with the spiders. So yeah, best use of that card, honestly. I can't think of a better use for that card than getting that hunt tile draw card back. 
All right, so I draw a card two. I get March of the Ents. So, uh, by the way, the dead men are done. Like, they're, they're gone. They did what they could. Again, uh, I was I was happy with that sacrifice so I could get Aragorn into the stronghold, but, again, couldn't do that. So it ended up being pretty wasteful. If I knew he couldn't get in there, I wouldn't have done it. Uh, yeah, and I just so happened... I think the dead men cards are characters. I might be wrong. So, had I rolled a faction recruitment symbol on my die definitely would have uh, mustered first and then played it but I didn't so not only is that die the only way you can bring in factions it is also possible you don't roll the recruit symbol so it's technically possible you can never recruit ever <laughs> with the die at least you know you can still play cards I get March of the Ents so yeah with the dead men dead 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 and eagles already kind of doing their thing i definitely do want to get ants involved and i'm looking at the new powers rising army and i'm like yeah they need to come in sooner than later so he attacks west rondor with the south rons they're going to get involved i retreat the polar gear right after i did that i was thinking like man i really should have retreated oz Gilead just to get in their way but i kind of assumed minas tirith was going to fall anyway and you know what if i was going to assume that i probably should have just moved but Right, so here I play the Union of Our Strength, which is kind of surprising. Yeah, so I kill March of the Ants, because again, that is a late game. Not late game, I get like a later turn card. I need to actually have the Ents made before that card actually does anything, really. So this is the one that lets me go into my discard pile and just take one that's a separate faction. So I get rid of March of the End so I can get a, a Dead Men or an Eagle card. Uh, Dead Men are gone, so I'm looking for an Eagle card, and there is a reason I'm doing this. I have not given up on Minas Tirith quite yet. Yep, so I bring out We Only Need Wings. So this is the one where I can move companions and then put them in a stronghold under siege, like Gwai here. So he attacks Minas Tirith. I don't know if he knew I was trying to do this. It's possible. I mean, I think if I were him, I'd be like, oh, he has dead men cards and he just wants more relevant ones. I don't know if I would jump to the conclusion that I was trying to get Aragorn in there because most people probably wouldn't put Aragorn in that stronghold. <laughs> it's kind of a more uniquely me thing. All right, so he attacks Minas Tirith. He plays Words of Power against poor little Mary. Uh... And then I play Out of the High Airs, so the, the Eagles will uh, kill an Eagle, and then they will cancel the Nazgul leadership for the round. Which isn't as good as it sounds, because the Balrog is still going to give him three rerolls. So, rolls one hit. I roll three. No, sorry, only only uh, two, because uh, Mary was... Uh, words of power when i have a hobbit in a stronghold <laughs> i don't think they're getting words of power i don't know i just my brain didn't connect that he would play that clearly he's cycling because he has two palantirs he wants better cards to play he can't play a sealed or's bane right now um he can't even he can't play nazgul search so all the character cards he has right now are unplayable if including words of power or sorry uh one with sauron toil he does press though which is surprising but he does have that big Southron army coming up. Plays a uh, day without dawn here, relentless assault. So yeah, makes sense because he wants to reinforce. And I play shield wall. All right, so because uh, I I still have two eagles there, I actually predicted that now that he knows I'm canceling his leadership, he might not play a leadership card. I, that's probably not entirely true because the Balrog is just giving him so much value right now. So I was probably just getting in my own head there, but I kind of assumed a Relentless Assault or something like that would happen. Something for the combat roll, so I figured, let's play a Shield Wall this time, instead of another Eagle canceling one. He still takes the full two. Roll's completely awful. Only gets one hit, so... And I get three again, so yeah, I'm rolling extremely hot. I want all of you watching this game to remember that I rolled one hit on my rerolls in both of those combats. <laughs> it's important for later. Right, so right now, 
Minas Tirith is looking pretty bad. So I have two options. I think I make the wrong decision here because this was unfamiliar unfamiliarity. That's a that's a big one. Uh, with warriors is the reason I pick free people because I think their cards are just more easy to remember. Granted, the point of the boats is to do boats, but <laughs> yeah, at this point I'm thinking I have time. If he has shadows lengthens, so be it. It's not the end of the world, whatever, I guess. Uh, I'm not going to lose sleep over it, but at least that card's burned. So I, I have two options. I could either attack, I could sortie out right now. I don't have any cards to play. Right, if I had like a Daring Defiance or Daylight or even a Brave Stand, like anything that would reduce the ouchers I'm about to receive in return, I'd probably do that. But it's it, in hindsight, it's good I didn't because of how these boats work. I decided to play we only need wings, kill another eagle, and then Aragorn is now in the stronghold. And I finally get the last muster with in long swift lines. So I get another eagle in Eagle's Eerie. And yeah, here he plays Ships of Great Drought, which lets you not only move but also attack. So this was this is bad. <laughs> so Minas Tirith is fully reinforced by the boats. This is canon Minas Tirith. This is exactly what actually happened. Aragorn did not apprehend those boats. Uh he was taking a smoke break in Lasernock, as we discussed. So he plays Muma Kill against my Blade of Westerness. So yes, in this game where Gollum is the guide, and I'm not in Mordor yet, I have one of the best character cards in the game for corruption. I decide. Uh, who is this? Mary. Yeah, Mary is going to try to kill the Witch King. We're going full cannon here. Aragorn arrived with the dead men. He, he was a little, he was a little awkward. I guess an eagle just had to get him in there because he forgot. But he's there now, <laughs> uh, and Mary's going to try to kill the Witch King. And I figured if I can kill the Witch King, Shadow's actually in terrible shape because after these two points in Minas Tirith, because th these two points are mostly just to uh, stop Frodo from healing. Yeah, losing that die for the rest of this game, which is going to be a long one, that's going to hurt. So he rolls a very good Muma kill, finally. He, he's been rolling pretty poorly on hits. So he gets three hits. Yeah, I get four hits on my combat roll. This is the worst thing that I could have possibly done. This is not what I want to see. I say, shit. And then, yeah, I'm with on my reroll. That is pretty unlucky overall. I mean, unlucky from Blade of Western as lucky in hits. Like, I've rolled three hits, three hits, four hits in this uh, siege. So... The Gondorians are all on fire, but yes, suffering from success, I rolled too good, so my mithril, Blade of Westerness, does nothing, and that's why I said earlier, remember, I got every uh, leader reroll in the last two combats, I got a hit, except for this is the one I didn't, and it happened to be the one I played Blade of Westerness. And yeah, it, even the four hits isn't, doesn't really matter, because if you don't know, the boats have an ability where they can just give you free presses, so... There's no way in hell I'm winning the siege, so Aragorn is probably going to bite it. Yeah, yeah, he plays that card. I play the, the Eagle Cancel Leadership one. I don't even know why. Out of uh, some false hope that those two dice I'm taking away are going to actually make a difference. He only gets one hit, so it, it did something. And I get two hits, so again, this tier is on fire. Kills a Corsairs to get the free press. Plays the same card again. Rolls uh, two hits. I roll nothing. So long, Aragorn and Mary. Yeah, so the, the whole reason I threw Aragorn into that siege, by the way, was only for Mithril. I saw I had Mithril. I said, I want to try to kill the Witch King. I feel like if I kill the Witch King, this game is going to be... It's going to be a long one. It's already going to be a long one. But where else is he going to get his points? He just lost his main... He lost his main captain. Gothmog's stuck in Minas Morgul. He's going to have a hell of a time getting up to the north. So, yeah, it didn't pay off. Again, if I had... Remember, I spent two dice getting Aragorn in there. 
because I had to I had to get the eagle card back from my discard pile, and then I had to play it just to get him in there, just because of the stupid ghost rule. So I ended up wasting two dice, which sucks because had I saw this happen, I probably would just start moving. I should probably move now because I can't heal anymore. I think I just wasn't even thinking about it. I was thinking like uh, military is probably my only option at this point, so I just sortie from Lorien. Alright, kill that orc, he doesn't hit me back, which is really good, because elves are not looking great, numbers-wise. I would have had to actually lose a combat strength if he hit me back there. So, I'm eyeing up Moria. I have this big Boromir army. I'm eyeing it all up. He draws a strategy card, gets half orcs. Alright. I heal myself, and I'm like, whoop, never mind. Autopilot. Uh, so I draw Faramir as an Athelus. Thank you, game. Very funny. Uh, and I get... Yeah, I get Saruman as a neighbor. That's the one I didn't want. So, yeah, I put the cards in the wrong order. It's a little awkward with Java. He gets another Dunlendings card. This is the, the one that's useless to him because it's the one that lets you attack Gondorians or Rohan. Gets the Palantir and Pits. So, yeah, nothing like getting Pits when free people's thinking about military. A little unfortunate. Uh, allocates one eye, rolls three more, naturally, when I want to move. And I roll a pretty good roll. Oh, no, sorry, he rolled five. So, <laughs> yeah, he rolled what? One eye? And then he rolled zero eyes when I was trying to heal in a stronghold. And then when I need to move, he rolled four. Yeah. It's consistent, it's been consistent, and it will remain consistent, so. At the very least, the damn Balrog die is gone, finally, a turn 9. Okay. Alright, so I muster in the Ents. So the Ents are in Fangorn. I have three of them because of that card I played earlier. Yep, and then he starts moving his armies to Osgiliath. He's going to go try to take Dol Amroth. I use the Will of the West to kill the Balrog now. Again, unfortunate it took this long, but what can you do? Uh, that siege definitely would have went differently had the Balrog not been there. I'm pretty sure I would have still lost because of the Corsairs and their free presses. Like That's just like like 30 dice he's just throwing at me. Unless Aragorn just keeps hitting as hard as he was. But yeah, I say he deserves rest. He's been doing a little too much. He plays huge and horrible, which makes uh, spiders count for hunt purposes. And they also add to the combat strength of armies. And they, I think they count to the stacking limit too, so it's not really relevant at the moment. This is like a three army right now instead of a two. Yeah, because mustering more boats, why would you? Alright, so I play a character die. I'm thinking, okay, I got two character die. Shame, you rolled four eyes, but what can you do? So I play the eagle one that lets me move because it doesn't go to the hunt box. He rolls two hits, gets a reveal. So, pretty worst case scenario because now I'm going to fly right into the spiders. So I burn Galadriel's ring to get rid of the eye since the eye did two damage. Makes sense. And then he draws a three, so not revealed. But... Yeah, the three is, uh, I can't just eat three corruption with Gollum. That was probably the worst tile I could have drawn. I would have just eaten the eye if it did one damage. I wouldn't have liked to get revealed, but it did two damage, which is unlucky. And then, yeah, I was hoping for any tile but the three, but because it's the three, I have to reveal anyway. So I took the same amount of damage. Yep, he plays the spider card again to deal one damage to me. Oh, sorry, this is the different one. This is one where you just deal one damage. I hide. He attacks Pelargir. So, I want to bring this up now before we get to something that happens in the future. Notice, those three guys in Iron Hills have just been standing there for a very long time. It's been like three turns. I've rolled musters. I just used them for other things. It just was never a priority to muster that up yet. I figure we're kind of at a standstill. I want you to remember that. So yeah, he gets three hits the Pelargir. Yeah, so that whole retreat in the Pelargir thing so I could hopefully protect all Amroth better. 
completely backfired because he rolled three sixes when attacking Pelargir. So had I put retreated West Torondor into Osgiliath, Minas Tirith could still be standing. Maybe. I didn't expect to, uh, yeah, kill uh, that guy, uh, all the guys in Pelargir. And granted, this army is not very big that's coming to Dol Amroth, but he does realize I have no musters. I recruit another end to Fangorn. Right, he takes some um, Lossernock and then moves to Lamadon. I play Athelus. I have no other cards really to play. I get one healing, which is pretty lucky. Puts DA under siege. So while this isn't a big army in Dol Amroth uh, that he's attacking with, he does have three Corsairs. So he has three potential presses to. Uh, free presses that he doesn't have to downgrade elites for so it's very likely he could kill those three guys pretty pretty good play these boats are pretty powerful if the dead men are dead dead i don't know how many times i'm gonna say dead dead today and that's the end of the turn he gets another spider card uh it's the red tile good timing and grand and threats and promises trash all right so i get uh speed greater than any wind, which is I get to recruit another eagle, and then I get to play another card, which is actually pretty nice. I don't have another card at the moment I want to play, because, again, Saruman is a neighbor, is not something I'm playing. He's not going to use the voice. Using the voice right now is actually detrimental to him. To If you wanted to mount the guys in Orthanc, it's much better just to recruit three more elites and just have this ridiculous four, six army in Orthanc. Way better than trying to, than making it some weird... Two five nonsense. So I top deck Emer Hill. <laughs> so my combats are on point. Like I drew Thrandals when I needed it. I drew Dane when I needed it. Uh, now I drew Emer Hill. And funny enough, Kierden ships is completely worthless. So it w really was a one in fifteen chance to draw a relevant card. So I got extremely lucky here. Yeah, my defense is on point. Frodo is not on point. Allocates one eye. Rolls one more. And then, yeah. So, this is the second time <laughs> I've rolled this complete worthless roll. This is not the rolls I want. I hate these rolls. And it is biting me in the ass so hard. Ugh. Like, what I want is to get Iron Hills ready. I want to go for military. This was the turn where I wanted to go for Moria. This turn right here. I feel like Frodo's done. I'm on four corruption. I have these damn spiders surrounding me. They're kicking my ass. They're trying. They're eating my toes. I'm still two moves away from Mordor. I was I was giving up on him honestly. Like Minas Tirith fell, despite me doing my damnest to keep it up. So I was like, all right, military time. I'm gonna to try to put Moria. I'm gonna to try to grab Moria, preferably with my last die. If he doesn't save a muster, I can maybe try to take it. Unlikely he'll do that. He has a, he, had, he did roll one hybrid, so he's probably just going to save that hybrid for last. Rolled a shit ton of attacks. One, two, th three, four, five, six. Yeah, he rolled six attacks, so really good roll for him. Again, military is not really his... But he needs to do it. You can't just ignore military. Because then I'll just leave Frodo out here and do military myself. But... Anyway, point being, did not want to roll this. So, after I saw the roll, I'm like, well, shit, I guess I gotta move. Uh, I shouldn't get hit here. It's only, uh, it is two rerolls. Gets two hits. <laughs> yeah. So, his combats were terrible. Let's not, let's be frank here. Like, Minas Tirith should not have gone the way it did. But th these hunts, mm. Gets a zero reveal. I let him, I asked him if he wanted to play We Shall Get It. He said no. I'm actually really surprised he didn't do that. Yeah, so look at this freaking hunt pool. This is just proof right here of how goddamn unlucky this is. I'm getting my ass kicked by this hunt. So he plays Evil Things, which is essentially a tile draw. Yeah, I, I probably would have been tempted to actually play We Shall Get It. That way I have a better chance to draw an eye. And then when I play this card, I have less of a chance to draw an eye. So, coin flip if he gets an eye and does nothing. 
he succeeds the coin flip. So I reveal to just take no damage. I roll all these damn characters anyway. So he wanted to bully Frodo, so I'm going to bully his uh, troops, and I play Emer Hill. Musters another elite in Minas Morgul. I hide the Fellowship, he moves on top of me, and then he starts moving the Dunlendings to reinforce Rivendell. Which, yeah, we have assumed he was going to do. Now, notably, I'm actually going to, like, wait as long... Oh, let me rearrange here. I'm going to wait as long as possible to move the Fellowship again, because I want him to kind of awkwardly keep that army on me, instead of moving them closer to reinforce. So I start passing. Yep, he, he kind of like, uh, so yeah, so remember at the beginning of this turn I said, this is the turn I want to go military. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, he uh, he put those Dunlendings in Moria instead of Rivendell. So all logic would point to going for Rivendell, because realistically, Lorien's not the that much uh, better. It's six against eight, and uh, Gandalf can get involved potentially. But I mean, you already have a giant army in Rivendell. I figured reinforce it, but just so happens the turn I was thinking about military at the end of the turn is when he. Uh, defended Moria. So I was like, well, that's unlucky. And... No, I'm not saying he did it by accident. He probably saw that, that the corruption is so freaking terrible for me that he should defend his strongholds. It makes sense. Plays half-orcs in Rivendell, so he is going for Rivendell still. All right, so then I bring Elrond in Rivendell because I've I've lost the Gladriel die a while ago, so it helps to have a if he's gonna attack it, I'm gonna have full leadership. I can play character cards. I don't have any that can I play, but yeah, I can't play Blade of Westerness again and uh, Horn Dark. I'm definitely not getting rid of uh, Three Kings. Couldn't play it anyway. So he attacks Rivendell, he plays Old Hatred, so this is the one where they roll before the fight, I believe. Yep, he gets a hit on six, or kills himself on ones, and then I play Shield Wall. So, does nothing. Old Hatred, it's not very... not a lot of hatred. He gets zero hits, and then I get four hits, so... I think you're seeing the, the pattern here. Rivendell is now not being taken, so he made the right call not bringing those regulars up there. They are not taking it now. I muster another Ent into Fangorn. He plays Pits. Again, going for military. Hurts the sea. I move again. Almost safe. Yeah, and then he drew an eye. So, I mean, maybe this was his intention. To have more eyes in the pool, so when I make this final move, it's more likely I get revealed. I mean, even if it was the two, I'd still reveal to it, because I just can't be taking all this damage. Yeah, the two would have been perfect. So I could reveal to it and then draw an eye, which would do nothing, but if I drew the two, he probably would have just, he most certainly would have played We Shall Get It. So. I get an eye, take a damage, reveal, I get another eye. So here, all right, so this eye does nothing, so he could uh, play We Shall Get It to make, to bring the two out, and then I'll go up to seven corruption, and then the eye will go back into the pool. It's like Mithril. I would have done this. I don't see why you wouldn't, honestly. I don't. You don't want the two in the hunt pool. Technically, if all the tiles go away while in Mordor, they all come back, but he's got two reds in there. So the odds of me going hitting four eyes and two reds and still being alive is almost zero. Oh, I'm sorry. He does do it. Yeah, my bad. I think I, I thought he didn't. So, yeah, he, he took like six minutes <laughs> to make that decision i remember this i was like because i remember sitting here like man he's really thinking about this <laughs> i was like is it i'm like trying to do the mental math in my head like what am i missing is there some like mega amazing play that can happen if he leaves the two in the pool am i missing something but no maybe maybe i am but All right so I, I remember thinking uh right this is what i remember so I, I thought the reason he didn't do that, why he thought so long about it, 
was, and I'm I'm sure I'm correct because he has a seal doors. There it is. So yeah, if he he lets the eye rock, and then he plays a seal doors, and then I take two damage because he'll draw the two guaranteed. But then all the tiles will go back into the pool. Definitely the wrong decision. The when uh, on minute like four <laughs> of uh, his brainstorming, I was like. Yeah, I don't know why you'd do that, cause yeah, putting the putting the two zeros, all the ones back into the pool, is gonna be way worse for Shadow than free people. Yep, and then he plays Craft of Shelob to put the red uh, Shelob's layer in. So we are officially in Mordor, looking terribly. He gets Ring Rates are abroad and Hill Trolls, so he top decked Ring Rates, which is very relevant here soon. Uh, I get Rates of Fear, which is nothing. And I get Horn of Gondor, which is nothing, and Help and Look For, which is also a top deck that is very relevant. <laughs> so the top decks have been very strong this game. I accidentally drew an extra one, then undid it. And I say, Godspeed, little Bobbit. You got this, Frodo. Allocates one eye, rolls one more, and I roll just uh, two movement, so I hide immediately. So. I had to hide, okay? So I had to hide because breaking Lord of the Ring, honestly, maybe I didn't because it's, he's going to be able to play those cards. It, just like, even if he doesn't play them right now, he's going to play them eventually. So this is probably a mistake. I probably should have thought this through better. Uh, with this roll that I just rolled, I'm like, finally, this is what I needed. I'm going, right after I hit, I'm like, I'm going to muster in Iron Hills, and then I'm going to play Help and Look For. Yep, they'll only be rolling one die. I'll be rolling four with a leader. Definitely I'm going to be able to take it. Dwarves are at war, obviously. So this three regular army combines with that Erebor army? Or no, it'll be a three regular one elite army combining with the Erebor army. Oh my god. The show is on. So I'm like, this is exactly what I need. He flips the, the Witch King. Right. So this is this is the weird thing. So, okay, everything I just said, ignore that. Because I didn't think about it yet. First, <laughs> I probably didn't need to do this. I think I did because I didn't roll any Palantirs or didn't have any spare characters. Where Helm's Deep was actually a sitting duck because I don't have March of the Ents. So if he calls my bluff, I do have five Ents in Fangorn, but if he calls my bluff and just goes for it, then Helm's Deep's taken and then all suddenly this locked up board of military nothing happening is gone. Yeah, if I lose the five po or the three points in Rohan, he's at seven. He can most certainly get an extra three points eventually. He just needs to put all his cookies in one place. I always say the cookie thing, but he needs to just throw it all at one thing. So first priority was to do that. And then I'm like, okay, after that, I'm going to muster in Iron Hills. I said, I thought that was more pressing. He plays ring rates are abroad. So I want I want you to know that after I did that move, that's when in my brain I said, it's Iron Hills time. That was the, the, the thought I had. <laughs> right after that thought ended, he plays Ring Racer Abroad and attacks Iron Hills. He does the one thing that cancels that entire plan. So there, there there's a there's three things happening here. Either Rob Steele is a dirty cheater, very unlikely. Uh, he is a god player, who knows? Or he is an X-Men. And I, I he got in my head. It's like a fighting game. Like he downloaded my move set. He got in my head here. I was like, how? <laughs> I had like the anime freeze frame. I was like, oh no. The perfect counter to what I was about to do in the next die. So I was very, very upset by this. So Rom steals an X-Men. He read my mind. And this got so in my head that for the rest of this game, I... <laughs> I had kept thoughts out of my head. <laughs> I was like, don't think about it. Like, 
don't think about the plan because he'll he'll know. I don't know how, but he'll know. So he's he invaded my brain. He invaded my private space. He is in my mind. He attacks Iron Hills and he completely wipes it <laughs> with foul stench. And I get zero hits just to really slap me in the face. So unfortunate. <laughs> So now these two musters I have don't accomplish anything. There's nothing I can really do with them. I guess I can get Rohan closer to war. Yeah. Not happy. So I draw a character card. I get Swift Boats. Does nothing. And then he attacks Erebor. So here I play Help and Look For for no quarter. And then he plays Cruel's Death because he's cycling character cards for more Mordor pain. He rolls zero hits. I roll three, which means I do four hits. <laughs> so yeah, he, he talks about how bad uh, his military is and how like successful the corruption was. He says all of his armies just disappear. I'm like, yeah, 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 100% correct. It, his luck with the combats is so funny. It's terrible. It's so like obviously one-sided in the combat department. And then the corruption, like, hunt is obviously one-sided. Let's look at this hunt pool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> three reds, three eyes, one blue. Yeah, you don't see hunt pools like that very often. It's pretty bad. So, yeah, here I bring up that, like, I just played help and look for her for no quarter. And I was going to play it, like, for the effect. And he says, oh, wow, that was lucky. So he's implying he didn't actually know that he did that god play. So that's why I'm pointing to X-Men. Full on psychic link. I move because I have to do something. Uh, hit the red eye. Honestly, not. I knew I was gonna hit a red eventually. So if I'm hitting the red eye when there's only two eyes in there, fine. I'll take it. <laughs> Here I say, obviously, I just gotta hit every red, and then all that's left is blues. Which is actually, in theory, totally possible to accomplish. Reveal to the three, or he didn't put the three in. Eat that one reveal. If he rolls like a one on Shelob. Yeah. As long as he keeps rolling low on eyes for when I'm trying to move. So he reinforces, uh... Yeah, reinforces Erebor. I muster another eagle, because the eagle can protect Erebor. And yeah, there's no Balrog this time. Yep, so he plays Foul Stench, still just cycling character cards. He, he knows his win condition at this point. He's not going to get 10 points, most likely, at the the way the game's looking now. And then, yeah, I play Out of the High Airs, so that Eagle flies over and jumps on the Witch King. He rolls one hit. I roll three. A very consistent murder from the free people. Then he draws Foul Thing. Uh, he is not playing that. <laughs> that, is the, that pool is entirely eyes. Yeah, he musters Dunlendings. Yeah, I was. I remember he did that, and I was like, can't you muster them in armies already? But I'm pretty sure that restriction is only in Rohan or Isengard is where you can put them in. Like, the... Yeah, he has no armies. I mean, or think, I guess. All right, here I play a muster. I play speed greater than any wind. So this is, this is the one I talked about earlier where I can recruit one. So I recruit another... And then I get to play another effect. And then I play Saruman as a neighbor. So, again, I don't... Ex right, I actually did this intentionally because when I saw he mustered those Dunlendings, I kind of assumed he was actually going to use the voice to get uh, three regulars. Does he even have enough? Yeah, he only has two regulars. Unlikely he's actually going to do that. But, yeah, he could literally just do a regular muster for the two regulars instead of using the voice. But, I was like, you know what? Why not? And uh, also, I can use any result on my faction die to recruit these guys. So it's a slight bonus. He attacks Erebor. I once again play the same thing. He plays Dread and Despair. He probably really wants to play that. <laughs> so interestingly, Out of the High Airs has a uh, better initiative. So I cancel his Nazgul leadership before he can Dread and Despair me. Which I'm sure he doesn't really care. He's probably just cycling, but obviously he wouldn't like to lose the Witch King. I rolled three hits. He rolled zero. So I think I'm like plus nine on hits. Uh, I don't want to pull it up because it might uh, bug out, but 
Yeah, so suddenly we are even in Erebor. And then I muster in Treebeard, because obviously my Ent, Ent Moot is very buff. He plays Candles as a Hail, Hail Mary. Hey, you roll three sixes, you win. Rolls none, though. I expect it, but I get it. I would there certainly do the same thing. Uh, I get there and back again, and Kierden ships. And then I get the Dark Door, which, again, dead men cards are useless to me now. He gets Wild Hiltman, which lets him recruit and then move them. Uh, the Denlindings. Which is actually pretty good for him right now. He can uh, reinforce Rivendell and get at least... You can get one in Moria and then another in Orthanc. It's pretty good. Not a bad card to draw right now. Because, honestly, the only faction that's really relevant to him right now are the Denlindings. Because I think the boats... They're kind of at a standstill with Dull Amroth right now, until he gets those reinforcements over there from uh, Minas Morgul. Right, and then, uh, yeah, he drew Lur Lure of the Ring and Strongly Guarded, which is basically just Deadly Strife. I mean, I guess it's pretty good to... Uh... Oh, yeah, no, it's only factions. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, no, it's just Deadly Strife. I mean, it's more useful than Return the Valinor, but that's not saying much. Uh, allocates one eye rolls one more and I get an okay roll because he played day without dawn is actually a pretty good roll so I hide immediately because I have to he musters in the mouth right I retake Dale so what else am I gonna do with these hybrids and then I move to Bree from Etten or North Downs Okay, I knew this video would be a long one, but uh, I knew I should have charged my laptop. <laughs> okay, I had to take a little break there. So where was I? Uh, right, so I moved to retake Dale and then to Bree. So, yeah, this Dale move, it wasn't to really threaten the Witch King. I was trying to give off that impression. It was more so to actually muster in Dale was uh, the big goal, and... Yeah, the reason I didn't leave more in Woodland Realm, which I probably should have, uh, you'll see that here soon, was because I just wanted to build up a big army in Dale and go for military. Yeah, so he moves the northeast to start kind of, he reinforces the Erebor army by one and then moves those four orcs over. I draw a character card because at this point, every blue tile I get has a lot of value. Now remember, I did discard a blue tile at the start of the game because one cannot predict that this hunt pool will be three eyes, two reds, and one blue. So, but there is another way. Bilbo's song. Um, what's the other one? Uh, ma, 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 ma. The one that heals you one and gets rid of the card that's already gone. So, yeah, there's plenty of cards in there that can help me here. So, now the, the goal is threaten military to waste his time. Maybe even get it and uh, keep drawing character cards and make more more pleasant for myself. He draws a character card. I draw Challenge of the King. Not useful. And he draws and he gets a useful one. He gets a red tile, so... Yeah, the character cards are not being kind to me. <laughs> I say, I'm glad you're finding yours. Yeah, because that would be the third. No, that is all four red tiles are in the pool. Now, granted, he is five cards ahead of me in, my, in the character deck, so. I recruit another Ent. Yep, he plays Wild Hillman. Yep, moves two to Orthanc. Yeah, moves one up to Rivendell and then puts a, a total of three in Moria, so very, very efficient. Really cool play. All right, I hid this round, so I don't plan on moving. <laughs> so I play three rings for the Elven Kings here, and I roll three. So yeah, if it sucks to see that, but you're not expected that. So don't ever. There's nothing worse than using all of your rings or even two, and then because you have the card, and then you just don't roll any back. It's like okay, now I wasted them. So I even say here, I'll take wasted. Wasted fives and sixes over rolling zero any day. 
it's way worse if you just roll zero. I need Galadriel's ring because I need to be able to kill eyes. So here he he actually puts Woodland Realm under siege of those four orcs. And here I was like, well, I'm actually trying to waste his time here. I'd rather muster in Dale, obviously, but I am trying to waste his time. So this is a win for me. He's not taking points. He, he's not going to take that stronghold. Not with Boromir standing right beside him. So I'm accomplishing my goal, technically, even if it looks a little goofy. Um, yep, so I attack it. I play charge, because why not? Try to kill these four orcs. I get one hit on my pre. Uh, and then I roll five ones, so... <laughs> Boromir just ain't it, apparently, because everybody else is hitting, but I managed to roll zero hits on five die, and he rolls one on his three, so... And then I, I press... I don't know why he rolled three die there. I'm glad... I don't know why he rolled them, because if he, those were actual attacks, he would have just rolled three hits. That would have been unfortunate. But he does retreat. I've, yeah, I've, I've, right. I put one elite back in there, because technically with those three orcs and the mouth uh, turning that muster into attack, he can just attack it again. So a little wasted movement by myself, but again, I'm wasting his time at least. Okay, he reinforces Erebor, and then he starts moving his way to Rohan with one little Southron. Which isn't the best thing to do. If I have a card, I'll just reinforce Edoras, and you're not taking it with that one guy. But hey, if you need that one extra point and you're threatening it, why not? Like, I feel like he was kind of looking at Rohan right now, but the, the Ents are pissed. <laughs> there are six Ents in there and Treebeard. So not only are the Ents pissed, tree, uh, Gandalf and Pippin can also just leave whenever they want. Because Treebeard is running the show now. Uh, faction card, I get the discard one and then pull one from my discard pile card again. And then I get We Prove the Swifter and Through a Day and a Night. So, again, I would prefer Blues, Bilbos. Um, there's another way anything <laughs> to heal Frodo right now. But uh, I guess we proved the Swifter is not a bad card to draw. He gets one where he gets to pick one from his discard pile too. And then he gets a Balrog has come, Durin's Bane, good timing, and Fighting Urukai. So yeah, that's like the perfect timing to draw that card because, I mean, I guess you could have used it with the Balrog. Like that would have actually really hurt Minas Tirith, but yeah, Fighting Urukai too. Yeah, great draw. Oh, he killed Balrog. Oh, wow. Huh. It's kind of odd to me he's keeping two tile draw cards. I guess if I just keep running in the eyes, he could play his sealed ores, and all three of these uh, red tiles actually just would probably just kill me <laughs> with the sealed ores. So a sealed ores makes sense. I don't know about Foul Thing. I think I'd keep Balrog over Foul Thing. Because, uh... The big strength of Lorien and Gladriel is she musters while under siege, but she ain't mustering shit because my force pool is gone. Alright. Allocates one eye, rolls two more, and then I roll three characters. Wrong time for that. So, yeah, this is the role where I wanted musters and uh, hybrids and all that good stuff. So, yeah. The game wants me to move, and clearly moving is not the play game. Please look at the situation. Stop trying to kill me. But <laughs> I don't think my little swift boats over here is really going to help me out here. So had I drawn blues, this would actually be great, because I could use these characters to play them and then move once. But I didn't draw blues, so. Oh, well. So, yeah, still, I'm sitting here like, I wanted to do military like four turns ago, but it just the thing, it's not working out, the die. All my dice are not working out for that. So yeah, he musters an elite Mori, and I'm just like, oh god, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to pull this one off. I draw another character card, desperately looking for blues, healing uh, all the cards I'm mentioning. I get axe and bow, doesn't help. Puts another elite Moria. I play the union of our strength. I kill the dark door for my hand, and then I, I draw march. I bring in march of the ants, right? Because my ants are ready, like they're ready to go. I'm assuming Rom still knows that I was looking for March of the Ents, so he probably knows the Ents are ready to rumble. Okay. 
Okay. He brings in a boat. <laughs> Is he out of Dunlendings? I mean, the boat's not crazy. Because you only have three there. Uh, I pass. Brings another elite to Moria. Uh, yeah, I put another elite in Dale. And then, yeah, I use Elrond's ring to get that hybrid back. Because even though the situation is not calling for it, <laughs> considering... Uh... So, yeah, he, he did roll two eyes this turn, so that does help. But uh, rolled a lot of uh, musters and attacks. Like, it wasn't like a bunch of Palantirs and stuff. I would have preferred way more eyes, because I'm content to not move Frodo. But, uh, yeah, rolled a pretty good roll. Again, my roll was good. It's just not good for this situation. So we both rolled pretty good. Just unlucky for me that... Not only the situation of I don't want to move, it's also the situation of I'm just not getting cards, character cards I can play. The only card I can play right now is we prove the Swifter and Majesty and Glory, which is bad. So, All right, so I use that hybrid and I move. All right, I move Dale to Old Forest Road and then I move Bree to uh, wherever that is, South Downs. Uh, I ask if I can take one back, so he lets me, which is nice. Uh, nice of them. I actually take the elite from Woodland Realm. So me moving that elite into Woodland Realm actually accomplished nothing and actually slowed me down. So yeah, that's just a mistake on my part. So he abandons Erebor, retakes... Okay, yeah, I remember this. So <laughs> so the, 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 yeah, the, the Charles Xavier Mr. X shenanigans were afoot here. So first he moves to retake Dale and then moves Rivendell to Trollshaws. Uh, and then when he he did those two moves, I remember thinking in my head like, yes, yes, don't move to South Anduin Vale. Don't, I don't, this army, please don't move it to South Anduin Vale. Awesome, he didn't. And then right when I thought that, he undid his actions. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, I thought about my plan. He's, he's, he's in my head again. But it keeps undoing because yeah, it's tricky. I'm obviously threatening military right now. So what he opts to do is move leadership. So he moves leadership to uh, right outside of Lorien, Dimrald Dale, and then moves Gothmog to Dol Amroth. I'm assuming he's planning for Shadows Gather. He doesn't have it, but he's probably waiting for it because the game's obviously so slow. He just shadows gather down here, not waste movements trying to get up there to Dol Amroth. Uh, Lorien's looking pretty takeable. It's uh, 6 health against his 13, and he has Dunlendings. Three of them, so looking pretty takeable. The Mouth, too, so even if that Eagle tried to help or Gandalf tried to help, the Mouth's still given two leadership. So my plan is in action. <laughs> so I've had my cards up here. Uh, again, I'm trying not to just overanalyze the game. Like I'm, I feel like I'm being quicker than I normally am, and I'm. This video is still gonna be long as hell, but it's an epic game, so it's fine. Uh, and it's warriors. Yeah. So I, I came up with a plan for military best I could. He, here's step one. So yeah, me getting Elrond, or not me getting him. Uh, using his ring had value, had a purpose. So you shall see. So first I move to uh, Narrows of the Forest with two elites and a leader. Uh, I probably should have brought more, but you can't predict everything. And he attacks Lorien, and when I see that, I'm like, okay, my plan's working. Awesome. So I burn a second ring, I burn Gandalf's ring. To turn uh, this character into a Palantir, and then I play through a day and a night, and then Boromir flies up to Eagle's Eyrie towards Gundabad. Yeah, and then he plays the Fighting Urukai. So I actually didn't see this coming. So notably, he did leave two guys behind. So that advantage he had is gone. It's now it's a uh, six against eleven. So technically, he's, he's at a disadvantage here. Uh, however, when you play these besiege cards, you can technically sub like add three health to the army that's uh, besieging 
because they don't have to take casualties when they press. So it's actually still pretty in his favor. Uh, but I do have a companion, so I can play a card if I want. But, uh, yeah. This... So... Good to bad could have been really bad for me, and that's why I brought three elites with Boromir and only two went to Dolgador because good to bad he could have used the ring I just gave him to put an elite there, and then when I besiege it next turn, which you know I'll show you I couldn't do that out he would have another chance to muster, so he he could put two elites in there and then I'd besiege it, and then he could play hill trolls. And he did have hill trolls, so I, I I stand by my decision then because I thought it was very likely he'd have hill trolls. He's not, like he's not at the bottom of his deck, but it's still likely. And two elite, two extra elites in good to bad, and then he turns those two regulars into elites. That's eight health. Boromir is not taking eight health <laughs> of stuff, so he probably would have been fine if he just mustered. He decided to take the riskier approach. Because this siege could go very poorly, depending on what cards I have. Heroic death and stuff. I just... I don't think I've drawn a single heroic death this game. I might be wrong, but I don't remember doing that. Okay, so I play no card. So the reason I play no card is... I have two mighty attacks. Uh, I'm going to use that for Gundabad. That's the plan. So I don't really have anything I can play here. I could play Daring Defiance, but... He played a character card. I'm not going to use Daring Defiance to cancel a character card. He rolls three sixes. That helps. I roll one hit. He plays Old Hatred. <laughs> Kills two of his own Dunlandings. Uh, yeah, Old Hatred was not hatred at all. These Dunlandings are very confused. They don't like Rohan and Gondor, I guess, and uh, they showed up <laughs> They showed up at Lorien and all this, these woods saw this saw Kate Blanchett glowing and her husband with his golden or silver hair and they said I didn't sign up for this anime bullshit and walked out because they they were uh, in the wrong area but he rolled two sixes so yeah in uh only what I guess it was like 13 14 dice he rolled five sixes pretty lucky for him. I mean, he, he deserved it. He's had really bad luck this entire game. Yeah, so this is actually, so of all the good luck I've had that's bought me time, this was the probably the one time I really, really needed my guys to fight. Like, all the other times it was just kind of a nice little bonus. Here, I actually needed it. So, the problem is because they wiped me immediately, and I did no hits. I did two hits back. I so said he rolled five sixes. I rolled two hits and similar dice. Yeah, things are not looking good. So that army is humongous. That army can go take Rohan with no effort. And even if I do obtain military victory, that army can easily retake it. Not looking good for the old free people, but. What's playing free people without a fool's hope? So, I play March of the Ents. Yep, I just confirm how they work, because it was the first time I'm using it, but I was pretty confident this is how they worked. So, all part of the plan. So, this is why I wanted the last action. So, I actually, uh... Like, notably, I probably could have played March of the Ents to just slam into that army before it took Lorien. But, again, buying more time for Frodo did not seem to be the play at this point. Frodo's dead. <laughs> this is not gonna work. The ring is not happening. Yeah, there's a 1 in 6 chance. I guess technically if I hit the 1. So a 1 in 3 chance I die, or I survive if I moved this turn. Unless he rolled uh, 3 or less with Shelob. But still, I'm not moving, so destroying the ring is not happening. So I kind of just had to let the Witch King army destroy... Galadriel and hope for military. So I play March of the Ents to Dolgador. I've got uh, yeah, I had four Ents still in my Ent, in the Ent Wood or Ent Moot, whatever. Completely whiff on the first. I have Tree Beard, so I'm re-rolling these. So four four coin flips, I completely miss. 
The next four coin flips, I get two hits. And the next four coin flips, yeah, I get my two hits. So, unfortunately, that took pretty much all of my trees, which was not part of the plan. I was hoping... It was only three dudes. But somehow it took... 11 coin flips. <laughs> Imagine flipping a coin 11 times and you only hit tails th three times. Yeah. Not what I needed because my, the idea was, yeah, that this big army can still try to retake Dolgador after I take it, but I have a shit ton of trees. So I can just play their combat effects. Their combat I get do the same thing in the fight when they're besieging me. I can uh Roll three hits before the combat, hit them on coin flips. That's pretty good. So, because I did this, anyway, because I did this March of the Ents on the last action, Dolgador is free to take. And that's why I said earlier, if you use that Palantir to muster in Gundabad, he could then muster first action this turn, because I have to use a movement to take Dolgador. He, he couldn't have known I was going to do the March of the Ents thing, though. He probably thought I was going to March of the Ents the Witch King. That's why he was in such a rush to take... Lorian. But I just decided to go full offense. Alright, so I draw uh, Father of the Trees, which is actually kind of relevant, but I don't have another March of the Ents, so even bringing them all back and then recruiting an extra one doesn't really help me, because they're already where they need to be. And I only have one left to use, so yeah, unfortunate it took that many to kill three orcs. Was not expecting that. And I get take someone you can trust, which does nothing <laughs> in Rangers of the North. So... Yeah, I mean, it's another Mighty Attack, so I now have three Mighty Attacks, <laughs> for uh, Gundabed at least. He gets uh, Corsair's card, Flocks of Curbane, Storm Crow, so, yep, Flocks of Curbane's not helping him either. I actually got rid of Rangers of the North. I'm sa I'm sitting here saving Horndark, because I knew the Ents weren't going to actually defend Rohan, so now he could, he could jump Rohan now, because the Ents have pretty much done everything they could. Like, they're basically all dead now. Alright, so I did take a corruption because I didn't move that turn. And I told him, I said, roll eight eyes. That's all I need. You kept rolling four eyes when I was trying to move Frodo. Roll eight eyes now. He allocates zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven dice. Roll zero. Okay, so this isn't as good as it seems. Technically, this hunt pool is in the best state it could be for zero eyes, in a way. I mean, obviously, once I move once, they'll start doing damage. But, uh, yeah, this is not what I wanted. Now, he didn't roll the most attacks on the, in the world. He used both of his ring wraith attack cards, so he only rolled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. He rolled eight attacks. It was what? What did I say? 11 dice? Yeah, so 8 out of 11 dice he rolled attacks on. I guess 7, but then he can burn a ring. So, and yeah, the actual polar opposite of what I needed. Because even if he didn't roll a bunch of eyes, if he rolled a bunch of musters or just a crap ton of palantirs, yeah, but worst case scenario, everything's going wrong. Yeah, and I did roll a good roll. More hybrids would... I mean, I rolled three characters. It's not that helpful, <laughs> to be honest. But what would musters get me at this point? So I'm thankful I didn't roll 70 musters. Yeah. And here I'm saying, like, it's a shame I drew the red eye. Because if I had moved and drew the red eye right now and it did zero damage, that might be a, that might be a world first right there. Yeah, the ring is mine, but not really. <laughs> the ring is mine. Ah, never mind. Okay, so yep, I take Dolgador. It's a forced action. I have to do this. So, he can, uh... I could move that, uh... South Downs Bree army into Holland now. All he has to do is attack it. Likely he'll wipe it. Uh, the only place I can retreat to... Is, uh... Oh, no, sorry. So I could move the North Dunland with that army. I, didn't, I don't have to move the Holland. But the Witch King army's right there. So all he has to do is put one orc in there. You know, maybe I could have done that. 
so he had less orcs to use to retake Dolgador. Maybe. But it wouldn't matter because you'll see. <laughs> you'll see why. That that play in particular would not actually matter here. So maybe that's a missed with the information I have now, I think I probably should have done that. I should have just uh went to North Dunland. And what else do I move? Really nothing else to move, is there? Nope. Yep, uh, my board is pretty empty right now. Uh, th this is a very low amount of troops. All right, so he does get in my way in Holland, so yeah, if I were to move to North Dunland, he just has to move in to Moria. He's worried about Moria, because that, yeah, that would be another, more points. But, yeah, once I, I would move to North Dunland, he'd move an orc into Moria, and then he would still move that giant Trollstraw's army to Holland. So once I besieged Moria with one orc in it, that, that, yeah, that army, that Bree army's not surviving against those Urukai. And he'd still have plenty of attacks. Yeah, it, it's all coming down to efficient movement. Like I said, he rolled, he rolled enough attacks to make this defense worth it, so... Uh, I did, uh, I burned a character and I threw Gandalf and Pippin into Dolgador as a last ditch effort to defend it. I know the mouth's there, but I gotta, I gotta try to defend it because Frodo's not destroying that piece of jewelry. I used the recruit to muster another Ent and he attacks Dolgador. So, all right, here we go. So I shine. So he's at nine cards in his deck. I know he has Deadly Strifes at this point. I predict very accurately that he's going to play a Deadly Strife turn one. I'm like, there's no reason not to. I'm only rolling two dice. He's going to play Deadly Strife. So, I win. I win the prediction. I play Daring Defiance. Because Pippin's there. And, uh... Yeah, Rom still corrects me. That is not legal. So what I discussed earlier about all these fiddly rules of screwing free people over usually, this is one of them. Yeah, so technically, <laughs> let's, uh, let's microscope this damn card because that's what board games are about. Forfeit the leadership of all the companions participating in the battle. So I have companion leadership in this battle. I have Pippin. I did that on purpose to be able to play this card. Apparently, th this is true. He is correct. Uh, I, it's one hundred percent right. You, every companion in the battle needs to have leadership to forfeit to trigger the card. Not just, it has to be every companion involved. It, it's such a weird punishment for using Gandalf the White. Like nobody uses Gandalf the White <laughs> in combat. It's so rare. It's what everybody wants to do. Presumably, it's Lord of the Rings. We want to have Gandalf the White square off against Nazgul, but nobody does it because it's so risky, and he can be canceled by words of power and stuff like that. Or, you know, you can just play Relentless Assault and Deadly Strife and still probably kill him anyway. So nobody does it. But in this one edge case, where I'm like, I'm gonna try to outplay the Shadow, block his leadership and cancel his Strife that I know is coming somehow is at some point been retroactively by the way changed the ruling to where this doesn't work anymore yeah the one of the lead designer uh, initially said yeah you can do this but then he changed his mind later i don't know why i i don't know the punishment was gandalf the white overpowered in testing very unlikely there's already so much going against you for doing this so it sucks to try to play fun things like this and for weird fiddly rules to screw you. Uh, but yeah, that rant over. Again, this is one of those, like, if I'm playing this game in person, just like, yeah, it cancels it. Like, the wording on the card is, uh, you know, it, the wording can mean either or, honestly. It really depends on how lawyery you want to get about it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a board game. Yeah. Oh, and don't take this like I'm coming at wrong. Like, no, we you should play the game correctly, obviously. This is just me more ranting about just how this game works sometimes. 
uh again like in person i wouldn't really care but it's not like because just because i don't take the ladder competitive seriously at all i shouldn't push that on others uh 100 percent play the rules correctly in a competitive sense always so he gets his deadly strife unfortunately uh i play with doom we come which was the plan where the ants will i'll kill an ant in the ant wood and then get to roll three dice before the fight so i do roll two hits Oh no, I roll three hits because of Treebeard, which is really cool. Treebeard's throwing his weight around. Right, so, funny enough, after all that ranting, the Deadly Strife didn't actually matter. <laughs> he just rolled three sixes, so... Yeah, that, that helps. Uh, it, it helped me more, technically. But at the end of the day, I've got four health in this, so those three hit, hits are gonna... Those three hits are gonna hurt, so yeah, I only got one health left. Yep. So he can't press. So uh, as free people, you don't have any cheating cards of reinforcing or anything like that. So th there's really nothing I can do. I got one guy in there left. Uh, yeah, it's it's not looking great for Dolgador. Again, if I had more trees... Yeah, I don't have March of the Ends anyway. You need the card to be able to play it, so it's not a big deal. I think I have, yeah, I have one card at the bottom of my deck, and that's it. I don't have any of the, all those gimmicky cards that let you draw more, I kind of already played them all, so. Yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a hard place here. So, again, if I still had three Ents in there, whew, this could be a very different game. I feel like I'd be, like, hard drawing cards, the, at the very least, get the one that lets me, oh well, yeah, I guess the discard one wouldn't work, because once I draw this last card, the cards get reshuffled. So yeah, pretty unlikely I would draw March the Ants again. Pretty unlikely. <clears throat> but yep, nothing I can really do except pray at this point. Oh yeah, so I... <laughs> so he's doing the correct thing here of uh, looking... or assuming I have Heroic Death. So he doesn't need one hit, he needs four to kill me. I'm gonna play another Ent card, so I might just do three hits to him before the fight starts, because Treebeard's re-rolling, you know, it's, it's likely. Joke's on him, I have no heroic deaths. I haven't drawn any. <laughs> so, oh, by the way, I completely forgot to mention this. Technically, when I play Daring Defiance, uh, I can play it. The requirement is a Companions in the Battle, so Romp was actually very nice, and he let me take it back. That was very nice of him. He didn't need to do that, uh, so I could play the Ent, which made a big difference. So yeah, good sportsmanship. Uh... Yeah, so he starts moving that Erebor army south. And yeah, I'm like, oh, well, that's not good. <laughs> so he's so far in a strategy deck, the odds of him not having one of the shadow movement cards, pretty much zero, that he doesn't have at least one. I mean, hell, he could even probably play hill trolls and still kill me. I don't even think he needs this big army. But uh, he does have shadow lengthens, so... Had he rolled a little less dice, I might have been in a better spot here, but under these circumstances, not looking good. Uses a ring for another army move. Yep. Oh, he moves orcs from uh, Ettenmors to Angmar. Huh. I don't know why. It's a little weird. Yeah, because there's no way in hell I'm taking Farhrad. That's the only the only time the, the Shadow Cities are relevant is if you take both of them. So, no way in hell I'm taking Farhrad. There's, I have no units in the entire half of the board. Rohan basically doesn't exist because they're not at war still. So, yeah, and here I say those zero eyes really screwed me here. Yeah. We're talking about just the RNG. He says, like, yeah, if you rolled even some eyes, the game would be much different in, on this turn. Yeah, usually with free people militaries, if they roll no eyes on the that turn that you're getting your strongholds, you pretty much it pretty much always fails, and it's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, if they roll eight to ten attacks and they can't retake a stronghold, like the only exception I can think of is Mordor because it's just so awkward. <laughs> like it's hard to defend all three of them. 
but even then, usually you can retake a stronghold in eight dice. Like it, it's pretty lucky to not roll any eyes usually. So you see any military attempts, they usually fail. So yep, we play Shadow Lengthens. Yep, he attacks Dolgador with my one guy I shine. He plays We Come to Kill, I'm dead. Oh, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to rush, but towards the end there, I was just nonstop drawing character cards. This was a double win, because at the time, he only had those five guys. So either I draw Blues or Healing for Frodo, or I draw Heroic Death. And I did end up drawing Heroic Death, which is pretty nice. But once that Erebor army showed up, it's like, phew, that's just a waste then at that point. So bye bye Gandalf, and he draws Deadly Strife. At least his Deadly Strife were pretty low in his deck. Right, so that happens. I'm like, well, military's not happening. <laughs> There's, I have no units left on the board. I, I that little Bree army is all I have left. Rohan's not involved. This is the most wiped out Middle Earth I think I've seen. Uh, so I move Frodo. <laughs> Said, fuck it. He rolled no eyes, so none of these eyes kill me. Uh, I think he still has lore, though. He has breaking and lure, so yeah, he. <laughs> if I hit an eye, I lose, which would be pretty embarrassing. I mean, not embarrassing, I know that's going to happen. He's got four cards in his deck, obviously he's hoarding those cards. So, I have a 1 in 7 chance to not die with Frodo. I like those odds. And I get Vile Gladrill. <laughs> oh, he says, bruh. And I said, it's a game. I said, all right, we're back in it. We're really not, but <laughs> now if he were to roll really bad next turn, <laughs> something might happen. So he plays uh, the, the drawing thing again. This is the one where uh, yeah, you get it from your discard pile, the good one. First factions, I don't know how relevant they'll be really. I mean, Dol Aramoth's not looking great. It's a uh, 10 against 5, but he's got 3 boats for free presses. And the spiders count, because he has huge and horrible, so that it's actually um, 12 against 5, yeah. yeah. And I tell him, all my factions are dead. So th this is why it's kind of an epic game, because I've both of us have used all three of our factions pretty consistently. The Dunlendings didn't accomplish much. They were just confused, which is probably accurate. But at least they got they, they still fought. They still played their cards. The spiders messed me up. The Corsairs destroyed Minas Tirith. The trees took a... Or the Ents took a stronghold. The birds were flying around helping out. And the dead men did their best. <laughs> the dead men plan was good in theory. Just, uh... Yeah, the rules got me. Yeah, he says, I have one int left to muster, and I've mustered all my eagles. Yep, I have, like, just four dead men left because I can't play them anymore. So, I told him, I said, that int's coming for him. Yeah, he plays Black Sails. I don't think that's even really relevant. I guess it lets him use any... Yeah, that is relevant because yeah, it lets him move use any faction die result to move boats. So four four regions. So no matter what he rolls next turn, he can just play use a faction die to move this boat over, which is a whole other press. So setting himself up for success, and notably he's moving up to Woodland Realm, which is just a sitting duck. Turn fifteen. So finally, I get a freaking healing card. Say the one, the least useful one, of course. Uh, and then, yeah, you got cruel weather. It's not useful. <laughs> yeah, I say, guess we have to keep his Elrond die because <laughs> Gandalf died. So, whoopee. Yep, allocates one eye, rolls zero more. I roll two movement. He rolled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He rolled nine attacks. <laughs> yeah, that's 17 attacks in two turns. P 
pretty no matter like that i did everything i could to hold my places but yeah 17 attacks is a lot of attacks uh yeah i mean at the same time if he did roll four eyes and i move frodo and hit an eye i i don't have blues I have six cards left in my character deck. Uh, those other two blues are at the very bottom. So, and there's another way, and Bilbo's. <laughs> yeah, those are, uh, un that's unfortunate. I say in the chat, there's other three blues. I kind I forgot I discarded one earlier. Yeah. So I draw a ca character card immediately. I do get there's another way, so. Now the other three cards I've been searching for are in the last five cards in my deck but there's another way is not that useful I need blues because <laughs> it's all reds and eyes I need blues to just let me move for free I'm not winning this turn anyway there's no way had I rolled a palantir it'd be possible technically no it wouldn't it wouldn't be possible because <laughs> I'd get revealed by eyes no matter what yeah the, the hunt pool is ridiculous all right so I say, yeah, I think I'm bone. Yeah, uh, against that many attacks, even if he didn't roll that many attacks, there's not much I could do. Like, I'm sitting here thinking, like, uh, I could get Rohan the War. Uh, Lorien would be easy to retake if Rohan was in a better position, but no, they're not. They're all the way from war. If I were to abandon Helm's Deep, he could take it with Orthanc. He honestly should have taken it with Orthanc anyway, to be honest. I think that's pretty easy. No reason not to. Yeah, there's nothing I can retake. I can retake Dale. But, uh... That's it. I'd have to I'd have to sortie out of uh, Erebor and then retake Dale. So I play there as another way to move. I say I want to kill Frodo, because he deserves it. But I get an eye, so I'm still alive. Yep, he attacks Woodland Realm. So yeah, that's the reason why retaking Dale just seems like a waste of time. I play Father of the Trees to bring all my Ents back, and then recruit one more. So technically, if you were to attack Fords right now, I could uh, at least play the combat effect to get that uh, Ent roll thing. So he attacks Woodland Realm. It's got the one guy in it. He kills me. So yeah. That uh, that army can most certainly. So even if I were to sort you out of Erebor and retake Dale, the smartest thing to do is just walk around me. Just walk past them and take Erebor. Then fine. He's got so many attacks he can do that. So I hid. Brings more corsairs. Starts mustering elites because he's gonna. <laughs> he's gonna send them on a ride. Yep, plays ships a great drought and. This is the most, this stronghold is boned <laughs> siege I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, six elites with five boats that all give free presses. Two spiders. Uh, technically, he's actually above his stacking limit right now, but I don't really think it matters. He's got one more spider than he should. So he moves leadership down there. I burn a ring to move because I want to kill for. <laughs> I'd rather Frodo die... Whoops. I'd rather Frodo die than for him to, t to get his 10 points out of pure spite. But I get another eye. I didn't hit any of the reds. Yeah, the hunt pool is three reds and an eye. So I said, damn, I wanted death. Yeah, so he chucked Lur, Lur on, uh, earlier. He has breaking in Morgul. So he could, he could bring me up to 11 corruption for the memes. Yeah, he's upset that Frodo lived too. We're both upset. He plays a Sealed Wars Bane here, which is f fantastic. <laughs> he only draws the one though, so the the one tile or the it was a coin flip basically. Shelob could whiff technically, so I take one. All right, so when uh when all has forsaken you, start begging. <laughs> I don't actually beg. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just like goading him. I'm like, play it to the next turn. Come on. What, what's the worst that could happen? Your hand slipped on the character die, and Gothmog just accidentally moved to Andrast. 
He wanted to see the ocean one last time before the fall of Middle Earth. And I say, I'm, I'm going to attack Gundabad because if I'm dying, I'm killing some with me. <laughs> I play Mighty Attack. I, yep, completely murder those orcs, and I get two points. So Boromir did his job. So he, he says DA. I, I, I start yelling. I say, don't do it. Think of the drama. I say, and after the see after the yelling, you gotta kind of you gotta ease into it, right? You gotta get soft, you know. You gotta you gotta really get in their head, like the drama. Sam's carrying him right now. Well, more like dragging him face down. <laughs> but there's that chance. I said, Gothmog just really wants to see Andrast. But yeah, Rom Steel is not here for uh, the. For the for the theme, he's here for the W, <laughs> which you can't blame him. Uh, I think it would honestly, if I were Shadow, I probably would have just played to the next turn because I think it'd be pretty epic to see to see if Frodo could somehow beat this. Because what would have to happen? I only have four dice, so what would have to happen is first of all, I'd have to roll three movement and a Palantir character or will. I would have to draw a blue tile, which is a two out of five chance. So play the blue tile with the Palantir, hide, move, hit the blue tile, which would be a one in four, and then move again and then hit hit the eye, which would be a one in three. So very, very, very unlikely. <laughs> just to get the roll I need is unlikely. There's a lot of things. So I probably would have done it just for fun, but you know, it's a competitive leaderboard. I don't blame him. So he completely floors Dol Amroth. I do roll four hits on the way out just to stay consistent. Oh, and notably that eagle that's been in East Eminent forever. Oh, no, he was in Parth Calibrant. Yeah, he flies <laughs> the last eagle of Middle Earth. It's kind of poetic and depressing. When I play this game in person, whenever I'm Shadow, I usually like when free people win, just because I get sad when Shadow wins. <laughs> it's kind of a win-win. But uh, yep, that's the game. Dol Amroth gets wiped, and he gets 10 victory points. So that was this epic, long game. Like I said, this was like four hours long. It was a really fun game. I thought it was... Uh... Yeah, again, this was my first Warriors game, so I got a lot of rules wrong. Uh, aside from the gimmicky ones that literally everybody else would also get wrong. I'm just, in general, you know, mustering that eagle and trying to do that with a dead man, yeah. But it was really cool. Uh, I enjoyed this game. Uh, I'll pull up the statistics, considering you've probably been sitting here two hours. I have no idea how long this video is. Okay, so Shadow was plus eight on sixes. No, I was going to say, no way. <laughs> That's a lie. Okay, yeah, they're flipped. So I was plus eight on sixes. And Shadow was minus two on sixes. That makes more sense. I was minus four on fives. So realistically, I was kind of more like plus four on hits. Because I didn't really, I didn't do anything offensively. So, except for Gundabad there. So yeah, I was plus four on hits overall. Uh, he was minus two. So that, that checks out. Uh... He said he really, all in all, didn't actually have that bad statistics. It was just, it was strictly reserved for combat for his whiffs. The hunt was ridiculous. And I played Romp three times, I think, something like that. Uh, I don't remember. But I do remember the last game we played, which was a long time ago, the same thing happened. I actually entered Mordor in the very final... Me entering Mordor, revealing into Minas Morgul, the final tile of the hunt pool killed me, and that was the game. So somehow, every time I play him, he just manages to pull the entire hunt pool on me. <laughs> Which, out of all the opponents I've played, he's the only one who's ever done that to me. And it's happened twice. Which isn't a lot, but it's odd it happened twice. <laughs> but yeah, great game. Uh, yeah, again... Uh, Thank you to Rob Steele for making videos. Uh, enjoy your retirement from the Mordor Casino. Uh, I honestly retire myself half the time. I take three, four month long breaks if I just get extremely unlucky multiple times in a row. Again, I don't take the ladder very seriously. Um, because of that, I try to have fun. Like the whole Aragorn going into Minas Tirith, that was dumb. Mithril probably wouldn't have saved me in this game, but it would have been nice to have it at least. Uh, 
but yeah, it, th this was a great game. And yeah, Warriors, I do enjoy it. Again, I think the appeal of it is the miniatures, so I this is probably going to be the only Warriors game I upload. Just the game was so long, I don't re not really enthusiastic to play other people online when the games take four to five hours. And yeah, making videos on them is also long, which is why I'm assuming nobody else does it. But it was a turn 15 game, so yeah. <clears throat> but that's it. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.